Hey, it reminded me of you. Uh, yo quiero leer. Quiero leer. O sea, I want him to go. Quiero el ir. I want him to go. Así decimos, quiero que él vaya. I want him to go. I want you to come. I want you to listen to me. I want them to come now. They want me to go to the door. ¿Qué quieres que yo haga? What do you want me to do? Nunca, what do you want that? Por favor. What do you want me to do? <laughs> ¿Qué quieres que diga? What do you want me to say? ¿A dónde quieres que vaya? Where do you want me to go? ¿Con quién quieres que hable? Who do you want me to talk to? ¿Cuál quieres que elija? Which one do you want me to choose? Do you want me to choose the green one? Or do you want me to choose the blue one? Do you want me to make a choice now? Or do you want me to make a choice later? Do you want me to continue talking? Or do you want me to stop this program? Do you want me to continue sitting in front of the camera? Or do you want me to move to this side? Do you want me to move to stand here? Or do you want me to be here? Or do you want me to be higher? Or do you want me to be lower? What do you want me to do? The Born Challenge! What's the missing word? Quickly! You're running out of time. The correct answer is... B. I was too frightened to look. The Born Challenge. Which one is correct? You know the right answer. Not much time left. The correct answer is... B. I'll call you when I arrive. Hello and welcome back to another One Minute English class. I come here... Well, I spend... A month between a month and a half and two and a half months here every year. I take when I go on vacation, I spend between a week and a half and two and a half weeks on an island in the Mediterranean. Okay, hora y media, an hour and a half, día y medio, a day and a half. Literalmente un día y una mitad, una hora y una mitad, an hour and a half. A day and a half. Una, un kilómetro y medio. A kilometer and a half. A mile and a half. Mes y medio. A month and a half. Siempre es así. Nunca decimos one and a half months. Nunca. A month and a half. Con el artículo, no con el número. A week and a half. A year and a half. An hour and a half. A day and a half. A finger and a half. Okay? A finger and a half. It's difficult to do. A finger and a half. All right? An eye and a half. Siempre así. Ahora, en cuanto pasemos a dos, todo cambia. Lo siento, pero es así. Dos ojos y medio. Dos meses y medio. Two months. Two, perdona, dos y medio meses en inglés. Two and a half months. Two and a half weeks. Nine and a half weeks. Seven and a half problems. Oh, I have seven and a half problems today. All right. Yesterday, I only had a problem and a half. But today, I have seven and a half problems. An hour and a half. Two and a half hours. A day and a half, two and a half days. A week and a half, two and a half weeks. Three and a half weeks, four and a half weeks. Do you understand? A year and a half, two and a half years. Probably it, it will take you two and a half years to make good progress with your English. Not a year and a half. Probably two and a half years. See you another day. The Born Challenge. 
Choose the right question. It's on the floor. Do you know the right answer? Chop, chop. The correct answer is... Where is it? The Born Challenge. Which one is correct? Quickly! Hurry up! The correct answer is... A. Have you finished? The Born Challenge! Choose the right question. It was Mike's fault. Oh, you've really improved your English. Hurry up! The correct answer is... A. Whose fault was it? My main reason for coming was to learn about Spanish people and uh, to try and understand their culture. Um, this is my second time here, so it has been a, um, a great experience for doing just that. It's a lovely place, the food's great and the um, atmosphere is wonderful. The Born Challenge! Which one is correct? You haven't got all day. You're running out of time. The correct answer is... C. I'm looking forward to seeing you. The Born Challenge. Choose the right question. It rains here about twice a week. This is a tough one. Quickly, quickly. The correct answer is... A. How often does it rain here? The Born Challenge. Which one is correct? Quickly! You're running out of time! The correct answer is... A. Where do you want her to put it? I'm Siobhan. And I'm Alberto. Y hoy vamos a hacer una mini clase sobre palabras que empiezan con la letra C. Como por ejemplo, ¿cómo decimos en inglés ciudad, Alberto? City. Eso es, es city. Para decirlo, no sacamos la punta de la lengua entre los dientes, no. Se pronuncia como en S del castellano. City. Una vez más. City. Practicamos un poquito. Venga. Ok. Ask me if London is a big city. Is London a big city? Muy bien. Is London a big city? Ahora, ask me if Barcelona is a beautiful city. Is Barcelona a beautiful city? Perfecto. Is Barcelona a beautiful city? Ask me if Sydney is a pretty city. Is Sydney a pretty city? Perfecto. Is Sydney a pretty city? All right. Keep practicing and see you next time. ¿Te ha gustado? Pues tenemos muchos más programas como este en nuestro canal de YouTube y en nuestro blog. Visítanos. GrupoBaugan.com ¡Chao! Let's start with translation lists. Ella está conmigo. She is with me. Very good. El calendario no está en la pared. The calendar isn't the, on the, the wall. The calendar. The calendar isn't on the wall. Very good. ¿Dónde está entonces? 
What is it then? Then. Repeat. What is it then? Repeat. What is it then? Very good. Tu padre es muy joven. Uh, your father is very, very, very young. Young. Good. ¿Cómo está su madre? De ella. What's he? How? How? How is uh, her mother? Very good. Repeat. How's her mother? Good. El avión pequeño es inglés. Pronunciation. How do you? How do you? How do you tell the difference? How do you tell the difference? How do you do? How do you do? How do you cope? How do you cope? How do you? How do you? Pronunciation. The Born Challenge. Which one is correct? You haven't got all day. Hurry up. The correct answer is... B. I've known her since 2008. It's been so much fun. Uh, the programme just could not be any better. The food, the hotel, the monastery here. I spent three days in Madrid before coming here and I travel a lot on my own. And I enjoyed the three days in Madrid but sometimes it's nice to be able to mix with other people and coming here it's just been wonderful being able to make new friends I feel so much more enriched, I've learnt so much about um, the Spanish people and I've made lifelong friends here and um, i definitely come back Pronunciation Talk to Talk to. When are you going to talk to him? When are you going to talk to him? We need to talk to the boss. We need to talk to the boss. You should talk to her. You should talk to her. Talk to her. Talk to her. Pronunciation. Pronunciation. How's that? How's the? How's the weather? How's the weather? How's the cat doing? How's the cat doing? How's the house coming on? How's the house coming on? How's the? How's the? Pronunciation. to a new program. Welcome to a new edition of Augen in Vivo. Yes, another English class and another opportunity for you to improve your English. Another opportunity for me, well, to make some money teaching. I get paid for this, but you, the opportunity is yours. And you, you don't, you'll, you wouldn't believe what an opportunity you, you're having. 24 hours a day of English, seven days a week, nonstop. If you don't Engli or learn English this year, then probably you're never going to learn. But I'm, I'll make a bet with you. I'll make a bet, a wager. Dos formas para hacer apuesta. Hacer una apuesta. To make a bet is when you go to the casino and you bet money. To make a wager, to wager on something, is more figurative. Okay, but let's make both, a bet and a wager, that this year your English is going to improve more than you expect. In fact, let's make a decision together that this year is going to be the year of your English. And by Christmas of next year, you will notice a tremendous difference in your level. And you'll, you will say, wow, ¿por qué será? ¿Por qué es? Why? It's because our Aprende Inglés TV here, Balgan Vivo, my program and other programs, we are bringing English into your living room, into your bedroom, 
And if you have a television in the kitchen, voice into your kitchen. And so you can't escape. We're everywhere. Hasta en la sopa, como decís aquí. All right. And so if you don't learn English this year, you have no excuse. But I'm going to do my best to help you. And you have to do your best to help me. Cómplices vamos a hacer en esto. We're going to be accomplices. I need your help. I consider myself a good teacher. But if you don't help me, I'm the worst teacher in the world. Everything I do, all the art and science I apply to the teaching trade, al oficio, de profesor, to the teaching trade, all the art and science I apply to the teaching trade will fall flat on its face. If you don't pay attention to me, recordar, la atención se paga en inglés, no se presta. If you don't pay attention to me, and at the same time, make an effort. Make an effort. And an effort means not only colos, studying, of course, but an effort also means simply thinking about English at the traffic lights, speaking with your imaginary passenger in the passenger seat next to you in English, all right, and doing extra things, talking to the wall, talking to the ceiling, talking to the floor. When I was learning Spanish, I had long, interesting conversations with the wall. Yeah, the wall never corrected my mistakes, but I gained fluency. And then later in the street, people corrected my mistakes. Okay. So, you and me, together, we are going to develop strong arms because we need to row. Row, row, row your boat. Row it remar. And we, you and I, we need to row in the same direction. I will make effort and a strong effort to teach you the best I know how. 34 years of accumulated experience in teaching, I'm putting on a silver platter, bandeja de plata, for you. But you need to come get in the boat and row with me. Because if I'm rowing on one side, the boat goes around and around, and it doesn't go anywhere. Okay? You and I together, we need to establish a direction, a trajectory. And the beneficiary of that is going to be you. So together, we're going to do it. And today is a very special day. Today's a very special day, okay? This is the first time in my life I am going to teach on television with children. And in fact, to tell you the truth, to tell you the truth, in the, my 34 years of experience as a teacher and about 34,000 hours of class, probably no more than 200 or 300 hours I have taught children. So I'm not an expert. I don't know what to do. But I have two little children, one sitting on my right, another sitting on my left. One is six years old, the other is eight years old, and I don't know what to do, okay? Which means, you know, if we create pandemonium here, uh, don't worry, it's, it's our first time. So together, you and me will learn together how to teach children. Now, I know a little girl by the name of Pamela Purse. Pamela Purse, and she always said, ladies first. In the ice cream line, she was first, because she was Pamela Purse, and she was a lady. So today, Pamela Purse is not here, but we have another little girl here, and a little boy. And we're going to start with the little girl, because ladies first, okay? Marina, how are you? Good. Good? Or fine? Fine. All right. Is your name Marina or Ines? <laughs> Marina. Marina, are you Spanish or German? Spanish. Are you from Andalusia? No. Are you from Galicia? No. Are you from Catalonia? No. Are you from Aragon? No. Are, no. Di así. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Are you from Toledo? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Cierra la boca con la M. Mira, no, I'm not. I'm not. A ver si lo puedes hacer. I'm not. No has cerrado la boca. I'm not. Eso. No, I'm not. Eh? Shh, shh. <coughs> Sit still. Are you from Valencia? Yes or no? No, I'm not. <coughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. No, I'm not. She doesn't, she's not obeying me. No, I'm not. Mi, mira, mira mis labios, Marina. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Are you Sofia Loren? No, I'm not. Muy bien. Are you Gino Lolo Brigida? <laughs> no, I'm not. Are you Marina? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Okay. Are you nervous? 
Yes, I am. Are you a little girl or a big girl? A little. A little. A little K. Girl or boy? Little. Am I a big boy or a little boy? <laughs> a big boy. Okay. Am I a, am I a, te the, a teacher or the student? A teacher. Am I a good teacher or a bad teacher? A good teacher. Yeah? Am I a good teacher? Yes. <laughs> yeah, are you sure? Yes. Say, say, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Is this a pen or a pencil? <laughs> pen. It's a pen. Is it mine or yours? <laughs> yours. It's... It's yours. Quieta. Don't move. All right? Do you know him? Yes. Is he your brother? Yes. Is he older than you or younger than you? Older. Is he more intelligent or less intelligent than you? Mm. <laughs> less. Less. Right. Okay, very good. And what's his name? Sergio. Sergio. Sergio, is that your name? Uh, yeah. Are you a boy or a girl? I'm a boy. Are you a big boy or a little boy? Well, I don't know. How Are you nine years old? Yep. Yep, or yes, I am? Yes, I am. Uh, ¿Me tuteas o me hablas de usted? Well, hmm? I don't know. Well, I, I recommend usted. En este caso, en inglés, sería yes, I am. Cuando tu mejor amigo dice, tienes nueve años, dices, yep, all right. Okay. Now, when I ask you, yes, I am. Okay, are you sitting? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Más ese. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Good. Are you sitting in a black chair? No, uh, no I'm, I'm not. Are you sitting in a green chair? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Mi, mi boca. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. No, I'm not. No, no lo has cerrado. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm... No, I'm not. Eso. Okay. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Are you sitting in a white chair? Yes, I am. Are you sitting on my left or on my right? On your left. Okay. Am I talking to you or to Marina? To me. You're to talking? To me. Repeat. You're talking? You're talking to me. Am I looking at you or at the ceiling? You're looking at me. Am I holding a microphone or a cup of water? You're, hol uh, ah, you're holding a microphone. Am I holding it in my left hand or in my right hand? In your right you're hand. You're holding? You're holding it in your ri right hand. Mm, good. Perfect. Perfecto. Repítelo. You're? You're holding it in your right hand. All right. And don't make noise. Okay. I'm holding it with my right hand. Am I holding it between you and me or between Marina and me? You're holding it between you and me. Very good. Okay, now, is it on the table or on the floor? It's on the table. Is it in front of me or behind me? It's in front of you. Am I looking at the microphone or am I looking at you? You're looking at me. Am I pointing at you or at the ceiling? I'm po you're, uh, you're pointing at me. Am I pointing at you with my left hand or with my right hand? You're pointing at me with my right hand. With your, your right? right hand. And now, which hand am I pointing at you with? Your left hand. You're pointing? You're pointing at me with your left hand. Now which hand am I pointing at you with? Both. You're pointing? You're pointing with both at hands. At me? You're pointing at me with both hands. Now, who am I pointing at now? You're pointing at you. At yourself. At yourself. All right, point at your sister. What are you doing? I'm pointing at your, um, my sister. Yeah. Do you like your sister? Well, she's a bit... Strange. No. Difficult. Yeah. She's a problem. Yeah? All right. Sometimes. All right. Well, point at your sister again. Point at your sister. Now, are you, po are you pointing at her with your left hand or with your right hand? I point at her with my right hand. Okay, good. Now, point at yourself. What are you doing? I'm pointing at myself. All right, good. Now, is this a pen or a pencil? It's a pen. Is it? Marina, is this my pen or your pen? Your pen. It's, okay, tell me to put it under the microphone. <clears throat> I put the pen under the Micro microphone. Yes, what does she want me to do? I can't hear her. What does she want me she to do? She wants you to put the pen under the microphone. Under the microphone. Under the microphone. Under the microphone. Oh, she wants me to put the pen under the microphone. Yep. What am I doing, Marina? Putting, You're putting? You're putting the pen under the microphone. Can you see it? Mm, yeah. 
Yes, I can. Ask your brother if he can see the pen under the microphone. Can you see the pen? I can. All right, good. Now, uh, is the microphone bigger or smaller than the pen? It's bigger than the pen. Is the microphone heavier or lighter than the pen? Well, I don't oh. know. Which one is lighter, the pen or the microphone? I think that the pen will be lighter. Is lighter. Okay, would you like to hold the microphone for a minute? Hold it. Oh. <laughs> okay, now, hold the pen. Now, which is heavier, the microphone or the pen? <laughs> the pen. <laughs> the microphone. The microphone? All right. Now, is this your microphone? No. It's not? It's not mine. It's not yours. Is this your pen? Yes or no? No. It's not? It's not mine. Is this a table? Mm, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Is this a cup? Yes, it is. Is this a chair? Yes, it is. Is this a finger? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <coughs> Sing it, shout it. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Good. Is this a ring? Yes, it is. Is this a watch? Yes, it is. I am I taking off the watch? Yes, it is. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. All right. Now, is the watch on the table? Yes. It is. It is. Is the watch next to the ring? Yes, it is. Is that ring mine? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Is this pen mine? Yes, it is. Is this microphone mine? <laughs> yes, it is. Am I holding it with one hand or with both hands? With both hands. Is it heavy or light? Heavy. It's, are you heavy or light? Heavy. You're heavy. <laughs> yes. How much do you weigh? Uh, I weigh, I weigh eighty kilos. How much do you weigh? Ten kilos. Ten kilos. Twenty-four. Tw excuse me. How much do you weigh? Twenty-four. Kilos. How much does your brother weigh? Twenty-four. Really? No. <clears throat> Ask your brother how much he weighs. How much do you weigh? How much do you weigh? Repeat. How much do you, do you weigh? How much weigh, do you weigh? I All right. weigh 25 kilograms. 25 kilograms? Yeah. And your sister weighs 24? Yeah. How old is your sister? She's six years old. How old are you? I'm eight years old. No, you're nine years old. Okay. All right. When's your birthday? It's on the 3rd of December. On the 3rd of December. And when is Marina's birthday? It's on the 13th of Mm -hmm. The 13th of July? Mm -hmm. August? Of March. 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 The 13th of March. The 30th of March. 30th. 30th. All right, the 30th of March. Okay, so she is a, she's a Pisces, right? What? Pisces. Is that your, that, that's, uh, that's, that, that's, those are dangerous women, huh? Okay. So, <clears throat> you're, you're the 3rd of January, and when is my birthday? I have no idea. You have no idea? No. Okay, well, tell Marina to ask me when my birthday is. Could you ask him when his birthday is? Birthday. Birthday is? Birthday is Dia de Pajaro. Birthday. <laughs> <laughs> birthday? <laughs> tell Marina to ask me when my birthday is. Could uh, you ask him? Could you ask him when is his birthday? Birthday? When his birthday is? Is. is when is your birthday? All right. When is your birthday? My birthday's on November the 9th. Yeah. Am I older you than you or younger than you? Older. Am I an old man? Yes. Yeah, I'm an old man. What do you think, Sergio? Am I an old man? Me está llamando viejo. Me está llamando. She's calling me viejo. Eh? I, Sergio, am I... <laughs> Am I an old man? No, you're not. Am I a young man? Well. <laughs> Come on. Look, am I full of energy or weak? Full of energy. Are you full of it? I, I have more energy than you, I bet. Yeah. I can hold right. this microphone with one hand, no problem. With my left hand. Can you lift that with your left hand? See? You see? <laughs> I have more energy than you. And your sister thinks I'm an old man. Okay. But in any case, is this cup full of water or full of wine? It's full of water. All right. Am I drinking water or wine? 
drinking water. You're drinking water. All right, normally, do you drink water or milk for breakfast? Milk. You drink milk. And for dinner, do you drink milk or water? Well, sometimes milk and sometimes water. Ask me what I drink for dinner. What do you drink for dinner? I drink water for dinner. Tell Marina to ask me what I drink for lunch. Uh, could you ask him what does what, he... No, what he drinks. What he drinks for, for lunch. lunch? Yeah. What do you... What do you drink? Drink for lunch. Me? I drink... Sometimes I drink water. Sometimes I drink wine. <laughs> sometimes I drink milk. Sometimes I drink beer, okay? And sometimes I drink lemonade. Do you like lemonade? No. You don't? Does your brother like lemonade? No. Ask him. Ask him. Uh, do you like lemonade? No, do I you? don't. You don't like lemonade? I hate it. You hate lemonade? Ask me if I drink lemonade every day. Do you drink lemonade every day? No, I don't. Ask me if I drink it once a week. Do you drink lemonade once a week? No, I don't. Ask me how often I drink lemonade. How do you... How often? How often do you drink lemonade? I drink lemonade about once a month. All right, ask me if I like it. Do you like lemonade? Yes, I do. I like it a lot. Now, is this a ring or an elephant? <laughs> That's a ring. It's a ring. Is it a gold ring or a silver ring? Do you know? You don't know. Ask me if this ring is made of gold. <laughs> Ask me if that ring is made of gold. That ring is made of gold. Okay, ahora es una pregunta. Is that ring made... Is that ring made of gold? Yes, it is. All right. Okay, do you have a ring? No? no? On your finger. Okay, but is your finger, is this finger yours or mine? Mine. Is it made of gold? <laughs> no, it's not. Well, my ring is made of gold. Tell me to put on my ring. Uh, put on your ring. What am I doing, Marina? Putting your you ring. You are putting? You are putting your ring. On. Uh. Repeat. What am I doing, Marina? You are putting on your ring. All right, tell me to take it off. Take of your ring. What does she want me to do? To take she, she wants you? She wants you to take off your ring. What am I doing, Marina? Taking off your ring. Tell me to put it on the table. Can you put the ring on the table? What am I doing, Marina? Putting it on the table. Yeah, tell me to put my cup of water on top of the ring. Uh, can you put the cup of water on top of the ring? What am I doing, Marina? Putting the cup of water and on, top. on top on the of the ring. Okay. All right. Good. And now, tell me to put the pen behind my ear. Put your pen behind, beside. Beside? No. Behind. No, behind your ear. Yeah, but which ear does she want me to put the pen behind? I have no idea. Ask her which ear she wants me to put the pen behind. Which ear do you want him to put the pen behind? All right. Which which ear? I have two ears. Mm. Do, you? <laughs> do, you have, do you have one ear or two? Two. Two. Or see them. I can't see them. <laughs> I can't tell. Ah, you do. You have two ears. Okay. Let me see the other. <laughs> ah, okay. Good. Now, which ear do you want me to put the pen behind? The left. The ear on the, behind this ear. Yes. All right. Well, what am I doing, Marina? Putting the Pin? The pen at the behind the, behind your uh, left ear. 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 Say it loud. I can't hear you. Ear. Ear. And how many ears do I have? Two. Yeah. How many ears does your father have? Two. How many ears does your brother have? Two. How many ears does the president of Spain have? Two. How many ears does an elephant have? Two. Are elephants' ears bigger or smaller than your ears? <laughs> bigger. All right. Are there any elephants in Madrid? Mm, no. <laughs> there aren't. Ask me if there. Okay. Ask Sergio if there are any elephants in Madrid. There are elephants. Are there 
Amy? Are there elephants in, Ma in Madrid? Madrid? Yes, yes, yes there is. There are. Ask him how many elephants there are in Madrid. How many elephants there are? Are there? Are there on... On Madrid? <laughs> no. no. In Madrid. In Madrid. Two. <laughs> Two elephants? In the zoo. In the zoo. Ah, okay. And did you go to the zoo yesterday? No. You didn't? But normally there are two in the zoo. Oh, they're two normally there are more. Two of each. One male and one female. All right. Yeah, maybe. But are the elephants in the zoo African elephants or Indian elephants? Well, maybe they're Indian or maybe they're African. Okay, good. Okay, now, do you live in Madrid or in Valladolid? I live in Valladolid. Do you like Valladolid? Valladolid? No. You I don't like Valladolid? I like my village, not Valladolid. What's the name of your village? Viana de Cega. Sir? Viana de Cega. Viana de? Cega. Cega. It's a river. It's a river. And how many people live in Viana de Sega? A lot of people or only a few people? Uh, 100 or 1,000. 1,000 people. Okay. And do you go to the same school as Marina? Yep. What, what's the name of your school? Uh, <coughs> Internacional de Valladolid. I'm sorry? Internacional de Valladolid. I can't understand her. What, what did she say? Uh, Colegio Internacional de Valladolid. You need to speak Marina. School. Okay, yeah, Marina. You need to speak more slowly, more carefully. Colegio Internacional de Valladolid. Repeat. Colegio Internacional de Valladolid. Slower. One more time. Colegio. Colegio Internacional de Valladolid. All right, good. Do you like your school? Yes. Okay, ask her if she likes to read and write. Do you like to read and write? Yes, I do. Ask her if she likes numbers. Do you like numbers? Yes, I do. Ask her if she's good in math. Are you good in math? Yes, I do. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Okay, and how many different teachers do you have? Uh, a, <laughs> a lot? Yes. Who is your favorite teacher? Miss Yodi. I'm sorry? Miss Yodi. Miss who? Uh, Yodi. Yodi? Spanish but Miss Yodi. But is Miss Yodi Spanish? No. Where is she from? <coughs> She's from America. Is she an English teacher or a Spanish teacher? English. She's an English teacher. And does she speak English well? Yes. Okay. Where is she from in the United States? Is she from Florida? Yes. She is. Is she tall or short? Uh, tall. She's tall. Is she attractive? Is she, is she pretty or ugly? Pretty. She's pretty. Okay. Is she younger than me or older than me? Older. She's older than me. Okay. No, younger. She's younger. Okay. All right. Okay, well, we're going to take a break. We're going to take a break. Okay. Because the people who are watching are tired. Too much English for 25 minutes. So we're going to give them a five-minute break. Okay? okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, you have five minutes to go to the kitchen to do whatever you want, but I want you back here, Al Pie de Cañón, in five minutes' time. So we'll be right back. La papelera ripta torpemente entre los surcos que le acercan a su madriquera. Dustbin. En la madriquera aguarda que caiga la noche para volver a recolectar ramitas para completar la estructura interior de los túneles. The Bomb Challenge. Which one is correct? You don't know, do you? <laughs> chop chop. The correct answer is... B. Would you help me if I asked you? The Born Challenge. Choose the right question. They lent me a hundred euros. Do you know the right answer? You're running out of time. 
The correct answer is... How much money did they lend you? The Born Challenge! Which one is correct? You haven't got all day! Come on, come on! The correct answer is... A. He'll give us a tip if we earn it. Pronunciation Where you? Where you? Where you going? Where you going? Where you taking us? Where you taking us? Where are you getting married? Where are you getting married? Where are you? Where are you? Pronunciation. The Born Challenge. Choose the right question. A bottle opener is for opening bottles. You haven't got all day. Not much time left. The correct answer is... What is a bottle opener for? The Born Challenge! Which one is correct? The correct answer is... A. Have there been any changes? The Born Challenge Choose the right question. He's tall and slim. Do you know the right answer? Come on! The correct answer is... What does he look like? The Born Challenge! Which one is correct? Quickly! Come on, come on! The correct answer is... C. How long have you known each other? The Born Challenge! Which one is correct? Quickly! You're running out of time! The correct answer is... B. If they had come, they'd have liked it. Hello and welcome again. Welcome back to another One Minute English class. La fête en anglais. The Z or the Z. The British and the Irish say Z. The Americans and the Canadians say Z. Ahora, la pronunciación de la Z es Z, es una, un sonido que no existe en castellano, pero hay que do, llegar a dominarlo. Zaragoza Z, es una S, como la S española, activando las cuerdas vocales al mismo tiempo. Susana, Susana, poison. De hecho, en francés tienen el sonido. Poisson es fish. Poison es veneno. So you need to be careful in French too. And in English, the Z. Zippity doo da, zippity a, z. Remember the s, and in English the s, you put your tongue behind the front upper teeth, and you Susana está asustada. The s is different than the Spanish s Susana está asustada. 
Okay. Susana, Susana, Z, the Z, the Z, Zaragoza, Zarzuela. Practice La Zarzuela, La Zaragoza, the Zarzuela in Zaragoza. Try to practice the English Z or Z and try to master it. Okay. The Born Challenge. Choose the right question. It takes me five minutes to shave. Do you know the right answer? Come on! The correct answer is... How long does it take you to shave? Hello and welcome back to the One Minute English Class. Uh, excuse me, how many people did you kill last year? None? You didn't kill any? And so far this year? None? You haven't killed any? So, you didn't kill any people last year, and you haven't killed any people so far this year. Excuse me, how many times did you fly to Mongolia last week? You didn't. You didn't fly to Mongolia last week. And so far this week? No, you haven't. So you haven't flown to Mongolia this week. So you didn't fly there last week. And so far this week, you haven't flown there either. All right. How many times did you take me to the airport last month? You didn't? No. And so far this month? I can't remember. So far this month, Astora? How many times have you taken me to the airport so far this month. You haven't. So you didn't take me to the airport last month and you haven't taken me to the airport this month. Well, how many times did you say thank you? How many times did you say thank you to me yesterday? You didn't. And so far today, how many times have you said thank you to me today? You haven't. That's not much gratitude. Don't you appreciate these classes? All right. Well, maybe in the next class you can say thank you. If you didn't say it yesterday and you haven't said it today, well, then at least say it tomorrow. Where's the best place in the world to improve your English? Spain. Sp Spain. Spain. Six days in Vaughntown is the same as 60 days in London or Boston. In six days, you will pass from an insecure speaker to an effective communicator. Call 91-748-5950 or go to vaughntown.com. Está muy bien porque efectivamente hay veces que es más difícil entender el acento de unos, de unos anglos que vienen de unos países eh, con relación a otros y aquí tienes oportunidad un poco de, de aprender no solamente el acento americano, el canadiense, sino pues, bueno, pues otros acentos eh, de gente que habla inglés. Sí, está muy bien. En Inglaterra o en Estados Unidos, para estudiar inglés, pues normalmente vas unas determinadas horas y quizás a lo mejor el resto del día pues, eh, no estás en contacto con gente que habla inglés, o si encuentras eh, españoles en esos países, pues te reúnes con ellos, de tal manera que no estás todo el tiempo oyendo y hablando en inglés, mientras que aquí, pues estás desde por la mañana hasta por la noche. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome. I think you know me, and I know a lot of you, but I want to welcome you. Fijaos como usamos welcome con un verbo. You don't have a verb for welcome. You say dar la bienvenida, but we say I want to welcome you to a series of pildoras, a series of little pills that we call the one minute English classes. But let me give you a secret. The classes normally last more than one minute, but they never last more than two. And these are little pills. Pop that you take, bam. And if you take one or two or three or four pills every day, 
Your English will notice the difference. You will notice the difference. Your English will slowly, gradually, continuously get better and better. Taking our medicine, la medicina baogan. Our medicine is the best medicine. And our pills are magic. They are magic pills, but they require your time. You need to make an investment in time and in effort, but first in time, and to take our pills. These one-minute English classes are designed for you. They are designed for you to have short, small, interesting, stimulating access to English in a fun package. And we are packaging these one-minute classes in very attractive pills. I welcome you to join us every day and to take pills, to be a pill popper which is not recommendable in other areas, but here we recommend that you can be a pop pills, okay, and become addicted. Your addiction to our pills will be beneficial for your English. That I can guarantee you. So we'll see you in the future programs of the One Minute English Class. Pronunciation. Do we have to? Do we have to? Do we have to pay? Do we have to pay? Do we have to choose? Do we have to choose? Do we have to go to sleep? Do we have to go to sleep? Do we have to? Do we have to? Pronunciation. Pronunciation. Can you? Can you? Can you come tonight? Can you come tonight? Can you see the sea? Can you see the sea? Can you call me, please? Can you call me, please? Can you? Can you? Pronunciation. Hello, my name's Connor, I'm from London, and I've been working at Vaughan for over eight years now. What do you do with Vaughan Systems, Connor? Um, well, I started off all those years ago as a teacher, and I worked uh, teaching in classes for about four and a half years. And then lots of other interesting projects started coming up. Um, for example, I started work on a very interesting project which was translating the Sunday supplement of El Mundo magazine. So that was a project I did. And then through that connection with El Mundo, we started to, to write this course called El Curso Definitivo, which is the definitive course of English. How did you make that transition? Well, I mean, there are a lot of exciting products coming out uh, and the people in the research and development department are always coming up with cool ideas. Uh, I've always enjoyed writing, uh, it's something I really enjoyed doing. So, I mean, I, I asked the research and development department if there were projects I could work on. I submitted some material to them and they, they seem to enjoy the stuff that I write. So for me, it's been a perfect combination of two things that I really like. I really love teaching, really love writing. So uh, coming up with ideas for books and writing material has been, has been great. So I really enjoy combining the two, teaching and writing. Is it easy to make the transition from teacher to another area? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, Vaughan's a company that's very receptive to ideas. If you've got ideas and energy and enthusiasm and you want to go into other areas, then they're always willing to listen to you. And if you've got new ideas, the company's got the resources that they can put those ideas into practice, be it in writing books, TV shows, radio, you name it. Here's the Vaughan shop. Here's where you can find all the material by the research and development department, and probably there's a few things I've written as well in here. Do you want to come in? Yeah, absolutely. Let's go. There's a pretty impressive range of, of things, lots of magazines, course books. This is the Curso Definitivo that I was talking about before. Um, a series of, well, it started off as 25 books, and they sold so well that we ended up having to make, well, having to, that we, we wrote 40. 40 books in it. I think I'm right in saying that these sold almost 3 million in total, so it was an incredible success. Um, 
As I uh, write a lot of other things, uh, some of the course books here, I would have written a lot of the, the questions, some of the translation lists. But um, actually, I think the most exciting project I worked on was, uh, let me see if it's around here. Ah, yeah, this. This is a Play English. This is a video game we made with Sony for the PSP, the handheld console. And this is a fantastic project because this is, this is unlike anything that certainly Sony or Vaughan had done up until then. So it's a combination of the Vaughan method and lots of entertaining games. Yeah, so this was a really fantastic project to work on. We also, um, we also sold it in Portugal. I translated it to Portuguese as well. And I think I'm right in saying uh, we've sold almost 100,000 copies of it in a year, which in these times of piracy is a, is a fantastic achievement. Thanks, Connor. We'll see you later. It's a pleasure. Anytime. Later. Take care. Bye-bye. Pronunciation. Should've. Should've. You should've seen them. You should've seen them. We should've remembered. We should've remembered. I should've helped her. I should've helped her. Should've. Should've. Pronunciation. Pronunciation. Office. Office. He took off his shoes. He took off his shoes. He told off his son. He told off his son. He switched off his computer. He switched off his computer. Office. Office. Pronunciation. Pronunciation. Trying to. Trying to. Were you trying to call me last night? Were you trying to call me last night? They're trying to get in. They're trying to get in. Stop trying to be funny. Stop trying to be funny. Trying to. Trying to. Pronunciation. Hello again and welcome to another One Minute English class. La I corta en inglés, la I latina, the short I. It, big, pig, fig, dig, all right? It's not big. You don't say Madrid is a big city, no. Madrid is a big, big, no big. And you have problems with this. And it's very difficult for me to make you feel the short I in English. But the only, the best example I know is an important city in Galicia called Vigo. In English, we have Vigo. It's an uve. Pronounce it como un F, como Vigo. Vigo is in Galicia. Vigo is a city in Galicia. Vigo is a city. No, Vigo, no es una E. Vigo is una city in Galicia. No. Ni Vigo is una city in Galicia. No. In medio. Practicar con Vigo, City, Galicia. Muchas veces mis amigos españoles saben, o sabéis, copiar a los guiris cuando hablamos español. ¿Sabe? Sin embargo, cuando quiero que lo digáis en inglés, no podéis decirlo. Vigo. Vigo is an important city in Galicia. ¿Ok? So, from now on, the city is not Vigo, it's Vigo, Vigor, Vigorous. All right, Vigoroso. La gente de Vigo es Vigorosa. The people in Vigo are Vigorous. The Vigorous Vigesis. Okay. I hope it helps. Good luck. Welcome back. Uh, normally, in this third half-hour segment, I have one victim, una victima, with me. But today, no. In this one, no. I wanted to be alone with you because I want to go very carefully over certain vocabulary words, certain terms that probably you need, well, of course you need, 
that probably you don't use. But nevertheless, let's start. Ha habido un ligero cambio en mis planes. Un ligero cambio ha habido en mis planes. There has been a slight change in my plans. In my plans. There has been. Ha habido un ligero cambio. There's been. Puedo hacer la contracción. There has. Por ejemplo, si yo digo hay un cambio, pues there is. Eso es presente. There is a change. Hay varios cambios. There are several changes. Plural. There is a there are. Eso es presente. There is, there are. Y en la pregunta, is there a change? Are there any? Añado any. Are there any changes? Y si fue ayer, hubo algún cambio ayer? Was there a change? Hmm? A change. Digo un cambio. En castellano probablemente diríais, hubo algún cambio ayer en el, en el plan. Se hizo algún cambio. Hubo algún cambio. O había. Was there a change? No se dice any. No se dice any. Any va con plurales. Any changes. O va con singulares si dichos singulares son palabras abstractas o incontables. Hubo harina en el suelo ayer. O había harina en el suelo ayer. Was there any flour on the floor? Había agua en el suelo aquí ayer. Was there any water? Porque estas son palabras que no puedo poner su plural. No dices harinas. No dices cuántas harinas, cuántas aguas. Aunque sí, aquí en España a veces entre dos aguas. Pero en inglés no. Ok, so. Hubo algún cambio ayer. Was there a change yesterday? Plural. Hubo algunos cambios. Hubo cambios. Were there any? Ahora sí inserto any porque es plural. Cambios. Were there any changes yesterday? Now. Hasta ahora esta semana, inclusive hasta ahora, incluido ahora, ¿ha habido algún cambio? Has there been? Has there been? Has there been? No is there, ni was there, ni are there. Porque remonto a principios de esta semana y traigo la pregunta hasta ahora inclusive. Y sigue vigente la pregunta, porque puede que haya un cambio en 10 minutos, pero quiero saber si desde que... El comenzó la semana. ¿Ha habido algún cambio? Has there been? Has there been a change this week? Yes, there has. There has been a slight change this week. We have decided to use a computer, if you can see it. We've decided to use a computer in the class and a special tool that an orchestra conductor uses. So yes, there has been a slight change. There has been a slight change. Un nativo seguramente diría, there's been. Haciendo la contracción de there has. Simplemente con un apóstrofe S. There's been a slight change. Un ligero cambio, un leve cambio. Slight. Quitas la S a slight y tienes light. Light es ligero físicamente. This pencil, this is a mechanical pencil. You say, I think, uh, I can't remember what you call these things. All right. It's a mechanical pencil. Portaminas, I think. A mechanical pencil. It's very light. Aquí no hay ese delante. Light. This is not so light. It's a bit heavy. Out of light is físicamente ligero. Le añades un S delante. Es slight. Es ligero figurativamente. Tengo un ligero dolor de, de garganta. I have a slight sore throat. Tengo un ligero dolor de cabeza. I have a slight headache. I have a slight stomach ache. I have a slight, oh, backache. It hurts a bit. I have a slight tennis elbow. We say colo de tenis. It's a problem I have with my elbow. And I have a slight case of arthritis in my fingers and in my joints. Nuestra articulación es a slight, slight, slight. All right. So, ha habido un ligero cambio en mis planes. There has been... A slight change in my plans. ¿Ha habido algún cambio de verdad? Has there really been a change? El algún en español cambia a un. ¿Ha habido un cambio en tus planes? En español diríais, probablemente, ¿ha habido algún cambio? ¿Has hecho, has realizado algún cambio? ¿Ha habido algún cambio? Has there been a change? Yes, there has been a slight change. De hecho, ha habido varios cambios. In fact, there have been. Fijaos. There have been. There. Siempre empieza con el, la palabra there. Y luego conjugo el verbo to be. Según el tiempo, el, el tiempo a, al cual me refiero. There have been several changes. There have been. En español, seguís con el, el, 
con ha habido. Ha habido un cambio, ha habido varios cambios. La gente levanta y baleares, mucha gente ahí dice, han habido. Va, hubieron cambios, han habido varios cambios. En el, y uh, pues en castellano puro no, ha habido varios cambios. Pero en inglés, el inglés se, se asemeja mucho a la forma en que habla en el levante. Han habido, porque pluralizamos. There has been a change. There have been, have several changes. There have been several changes, yes, in our plans. En un principio, en un principio yo pensaba hacerlo con ordenador, pero luego decidí hacerlo sin ordenador. Ok. En un principio, en un principio. At first, or originally. Y prefiero originally en este caso. At first is al principio. Pero dice, esa expresión en castellano, en un principio, que oigo mucho, uh, en inglés es originally. Originally, my idea was to use um, a computer. But I decided to, uh, to do it straight from my head, without the computer, basically without my book, to do it straight from my head. So, número uno, ha habido un ligero cambio en mis planes. There's been, con contracción, there's been a slight change in my plans. Number two, quiero ser esbelto como tú. Yeah. I want to be slim like you. Slim. There are many words for the person's figure. A person can be skinny. Skinny. Skin is piel. Skin. Añades un N de más y luego un Y. Tienes flaco, flaco. Skinny, skinny, skinny. You're very skinny. You are skin and bones. It is piel y hueso, se dice. You're very skinny. You need to put on some weight. You need to gain some weight. How much do you weigh? Talking to my friend. My friend is very, very skinny. Pablo, he's like this. He's very skinny. He needs to eat a little bit more. He needs to put on some weight. He needs to gain some weight. All right. The British usually say to put on. The Americans usually say to gain. Ganar peso. Engordar un poco. Now, engordar, of course, in Spanish, can have different interpretations. Una persona super flaca, pues necesita engordar. Y eso es to gain some weight or to put on some weight if the person is too skinny. Uh, now, engordar is also to get fat. All right. Si sigues comiendo así, vas, te vas a poner, pero gordo, de verdad. You're going to get fat. Vas a engordar. To get fat. But let's go back. Okay, a person is skinny. It's not really very good. You can see the person's ribs. You can see his bones. A person's skinny. And that person needs to eat more uh, to intake more calories or to take in more calories and to burn fewer calories in order to gain weight. If you want to gain weight, you need to take in, ingerir, take in more calories than you burn, okay? And then you start gaining weight. And if you're skinny, then you pass to be thin. Now thin is delegado, but thin is not, it's a neutral word. It's not necessarily a positive word. It's not negative. If you say Pablo is thin, uh, it really doesn't, it's not a, it's not a compliment. No es un cumplido. All right, it's thin. Thin means, uh, it's delgado. All right, maybe he needs to gain a bit, a few kilos, maybe. Thin also is fino. This is not a thin, this is a thin book. This is a thick book. Thin is fino, grueso. Thin and thick. Uh, thin is also poco espeso. If you're eating a puree de judías, a bean puree, and it's, it was too much water, it's, it's, oh, this is very thin, I don't like this. You need to thicken, espesar, to thicken the soup and make it thicker. Thick and thin, an expression through thick and thin. Yes, all right, I have become an English teacher and I have improved my ability to teach through thick and thin. Contra viento y marea. Through thick, a través de lo espeso y lo no tan espeso. I don't know how to say thin in Spanish. Uh, viscoso y no viscoso. I don't know how to say thin. If you say my soup or this puree, este puré, is too thin, I can't, I, I don't remember how to say that in Spanish. Probably I would say it's muy poco espeso. I would say it's not very thick. Not very thick. In Spanish you use a lot the expression poco algo. All right which is I like, I like the expression. But in English, in this case, no, it's, it's very thin. Now, through thick and thin, yes, 
Pero to contend means contra viento y marea. There's one song by the Beatles. I don't remember the song, but there's one section of the song. Through thick and thin, I will always be your friend. Contra viento y marea, siempre seré tu amigo. Pase lo que pase. Through thick and thin. I think it's from the album Rubber Soul. Do you remember Rubber Soul? There were two albums. In the middle period of the Beatles, the early period everybody remembers, she loves you, yeah, 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 etc. And then the late period, Sgt. Pepper and um, Magical Mystery Tour, Abbey Road, that's the late period, in the middle. For me, were two or three of the best albums the Beatles ever made. For, in, for my gustos, para mis gustos, for my tastes. One was Rubber Soul, literalmente, Alma de Goma, porque Soul, escrito Soul, Soul, tiene el mismo sonido fonético que suela de zapato, y una suela de goma, Rubber Soul. Pero está escrito en, por los Beatles, Soul, Rubber Soul. Y era una mezcla de un poco la música soul americana y, uh, y el, la música típica de los Beatles. Rubber Soul, and, and then the second one was Revolver. Interesting name for an album, Revolver. And then the, um, the album Help, uh, from the movie Help. Those three are my three favorite albums by the Beatles. And one of them, in one of them, I can't remember the name of the song, and I think it's on the Rubber Soul album. John Lennon and Paul McCartney are singing, and they say, Through thick and thin, I will always be your friend. Okay, no, it's done Help. It's in the Help album, yes. For I have got another girl. It's called Another Girl, I think. Check. Another Girl by the Beatles. Look at the words. Se dicen the words, más que the lyrics. Se dicen los dos cosas. And you will see. Through thick and thin, I will always be your friend. Okay, quiero ser esbelto como tú. I want to be slim. Ahora slim. Slim. Slim sí que es un cumplido. Sl slim is a compliment. Everybody wants to be slim. That's the ideal of the human body. Beautiful, a nice figure to be slim and attractive. Of course, we all want to be slim. And in order to be slim, uh, there are two things you need. Genetically, you need help. If your parents, if your mother and your father are slim, la probabilidad que tú lo seas, the likelihood, the likelihood that you'll be slim is greater much greater than if your parents are fat, overweight, obese, okay? So, and the second factor is diet, okay? Diet. And if you maintain a good diet in which you take in the same amount of calories that you burn, then probably you can stay slim. But some people have a genetic handicap or they have genetic factors against them and it's extraordinarily difficult for them to stay slim. And it requires constant vigilance, constant work, constant dieting, constant exercise, because they have inherited, they have inherited certain genes. They have inherited genes. Yeah, genes aquí no son vaqueros. Genes son genes, de lo genético. Genetic. They have inherited genetic coding una codificación genética, that makes them naturally tend to gain weight or to become overweight or to get fat or to become, estoy saltando, become a get, ante la duda become, to become obese, obeso. And then because their parents or grandparents or the family in general have, has inherited these genes, these traits, características, rasgos. And so these people have to struggle and fight every day with diets, watching what they eat, watching their weight, okay, in order to stay slim, okay, to be slim. For me, it's easy to stay slim. My father was slim and my mother was relatively slim. My mother was short. My mother's only about one meter 55, one meter 54, and she had three children, and so she grew a bit in her hips, but she was a slim woman. Her question was just las caderas, her hips, because of childbirth, okay? But 
to stay slim. And if you can't stay slim, or if you have inherited genes that uh, mean that you will have trouble staying slim, then the likelihood that you will gain weight is very great, especially as you get older. As you get older, you start gaining weight, and it becomes more difficult to uh, control this factor. Uh, your metabolism, say this, say ralentiza, okay, slows down. Your metabolism, metabolism. Fijaos, los ismos, communism, socialism, capitalism, fascism, mechanism, uh, Stalinism, Leninism, Maoism, metabolism. Fijaos como termino cada palabra. Ism. Como si se escribe ism. I-S-M. Así como en español decís capitalismo. Ahora quitamos la O y ahí lo tienes en inglés. Capitalism. Sin embargo, cuando lo pronunciamos, es como si hubiera claramente una letra A entre la S y la M final. Ism. Metabolism, capitalism, communism, mechanism, cannibalism, terrorism, etc. Okay, so your metabolism slows down. It doesn't speed up. No se acelera, se desacelera. It slows down as you get older, and then it's naturally more difficult. Also, your life becomes more sedentary. When kids are little, children, little children, or adolescents, even young adults often have a more active way of life, a more active style than uh, when they get older. It's changing now because kids are spending too much time in front of computers playing video games or playing little uh, hand video games and they spend their time sitting. This was not true two, one generation or two generations ago. When I grew up, I imagine I burned 5,000 calories a day. I was always running, climbing trees, walking on the roofs of houses. I was always getting into trouble, hurting myself, falling down, riding my bicycle. I was burning calories. Now kids burn calories only in their thumbs, okay? and they're sitting all the time, so we have more what we call child obesity. Obesidad infantil. And f in my opinion, the problem is uh, children are leading a more sedentary life. To lead, un verbo, dirigir, to lead. Ser líder is to be a leader, to lead. Uh, dirigir los ejércitos, to lead the armies. Okay? Now, to lead, también se usa mucho para... El uh, Pepe lleva una vida muy buena, una vida muy tranquila. He leads a very calm life. He leads a nice life. He lead to lead. And children, nowadays, nowadays, la hay medio nowadays, no lo pronuncio yo. Nowadays, children lead a more sedentary, sedentary life uh, because they're sitting in front of computer screens or they're sitting in a chair playing with a handheld sujeto en la mano, handheld computer game, all right, video game. So uh, they're not outside running around, climbing trees, falling down, riding bicycles, okay, chasing dogs or whatever. And uh, so the problem of obesity is starting every decade at a younger period, okay, younger and younger. So it's more difficult for kids now to stay slim. It's more difficult for kids to stay slim. All right, so, recap recapitulating, uh, you can be f skinny, eso estar flaquísimo. To be skinny, you can be thin, you can be slim, which is perfect, you can be a little overweight. Overweight es la forma, digamos, más política o discreta de decir gordo. You're a bit overweight. Macho, estás gordísimo. Okay, come menos. He said, Pepe, uh, you look, you're, you're a bit overweight. You need to cut down on your food intake. Cut down is reducir. To cut is cortar, pero cut down is reducir. You need to cut down on. Siempre añado on. Entonces, tenemos dos preposiciones. Cut down on. 
You need to cut down on your uh, intake. Intake is consumo. Lo que tomas para adentro. Okay, the intake. You need to cut down on the amount of food you eat, Pepe, because you're gaining a bit too much weight. And if Pepe continues eating too much and not getting enough, getting, 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 to get exercise, and not getting enough exercise, he'll continue getting fatter and fatter until he becomes grossly overweight. And when a person is grossly overweight, say he's obese. And that can affect your heart. That can make you more prone, más propenso, more prone to diet, to certain illnesses, diabetes. A lot of times when you become, when you become fat, when you get fat, when you are grossly overweight, becoming obese, uh, you run a greater risk. Aquí se dice correr un riesgo, no tomar un riesgo. There's two expressions in English, to take a risk and to run a risk. Pero en este caso, cuando el riesgo es de verdad peligroso, uh, we say to run. A nadie le gusta run risks. A muchos nos gusta, yo incluido, take risks. To take calculated risks. Una persona que no tiene aversión a riesgo es una persona que, a la que le gusta tomar cierto riesgo. Se dice en inglés, to take risks. A risk taker, gracias a los que existen. Thank God, risk takers exist. Because if a person takes a financial or economic risk, often, if he or she is successful, that transforms into wealth. And that wealth is injected into the economic system of a country, circulates, and in general, the uh, standard of living of the country in question goes up. Thanks to risk takers, okay? Los héroes de hoy en día. In the Middle Ages, the, the uh, heroes were the caballeros, the armadura reluciente, the knights in shining armor. But today, for me, the heroes are the risk takers who take risks and uh, create, generate wealth for themselves, of course. But at the same time, it's impossible to avoid the wealth not disseminating among other people who are involved and into the general financial system of a country. Those are risk takers, but they don't run risks because to run a risk is always negative. It's always negative. Corre un riesgo. And a person who eats too much and becomes obese becomes so overweight that it starts to be dangerous. That person runs a high risk of contracting diabetes, of suffering heart disease, which means having problems with his heart, arteriosclerosis, and other problems. And in general, the qual his quality of life or her quality of life falls. So that person needs to make a concerted effort, concerted, como concertado, pero concierto es contigo mismo, a concerted effort to cut down on his intake of calories and to make an effort to burn more calories through more activity, through, a través de, through more physical activity, either walking, jogging, running, or playing sports of different sorts, not video games, etc. And, uh, and that person can slowly lose weight. It's not really difficult, but it takes fuerza de voluntad. It takes, es una forma inglesa muy corriente, hace falta, requiere, exige fuerza de voluntad. It takes, it takes willpower, una sola palabra. Will, como voluntad, power, poder. Poder de voluntad, fuerza de voluntad, it takes willpower. But I don't think it takes so much willpower, but a bit, all right? Uh, to lose weight and to become slim, como la segunda frase. No hemos progresado mucho hoy, eh? en, este, en esta sección. Quiero ser esbelto como tú. I want to be slim like you. And uh, if you want to be slim like me, then take in the same number of calories that you burn, or if you're already a bit fat, Take in fewer calories, fewer calories, plural, than you burn. And um, you will see that you will slowly, gradually lose weight and become slim. All right. I'll be back. Okay, in just a few minutes to continue. So don't go too far away. Okay, I want to see you back in five minutes. Thank you.
right. Hey, how are you guys? Hello. How are you? Hi. All right. What's your name? Robert. Robert, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And what's your name? My name is Juan. Juan. Robert and Juan. Great. Now, uh, you speak English, and, and of course you're here because you love English. What can you say to the next generation? Because, of course, it's different, your generation and the next generation. Your generation, you, you didn't have this option when you were younger to take a course you know, on TV, Internet. What, what do you recommend to the younger generation? I'm very happy, very, very happy to, to know your system now. Yeah. Because everybody has the occasion, the big occasion to learn this language, yeah. it, it, very easy. It's practical. I mean, in the end, you're problems. right without problems. And what about you? What do you think? I mean, what do you think? What would you, what advice would you give to young kids out there who are, you know, thinking about studying a language? What could you say to them? Well, I, I would say that uh, this is a unique opportunity because the 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 system is new in the sense that it's uh, using at the same time internet, television, radio. Right. And then the quality of the system is really fantastic. The quality of the professionals, teachers, mm -hmm. and it's fun. So I think uh, they should use it. Yeah. I think. I envy you. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, listen, it's been a pleasure meeting all of you. And, uh, and keep up the good work. So, Richard, what exactly is going on up here on this floor? Okay, this is where the oral part of the exam is taking place. So we have a, a lot of teachers who are examining uh, our students the on a one-to exactly the oral oral expression on a one-to-one -one basis. So they have a, a, a ten-minute oral examination broken down into two parts. And now, let me ask you about the exam in general. I know it's a very complete exam. How many different parts are there to the exam? Well, in total there are four. We have the oral part, oral expression, mm -hmm. listening comprehension, okay. writing, and reading comprehension. So, like the course, it's a very complete exam. Very complete and very in-depth, and, right. and at the same time, very challenging. Well, I, I mean, I can't tell you, and you know, how many students we have that understand so much, but a la hora de hablar, when it comes down to talking, they freeze up. Exactly, but that, that's, that's a barrier that every one of us has to overcome. We had the same problem when we, well, I, I did when I came to Spain. Sure, sure. You, you have to overcome that barrier. Overcome is, is right. uh, superar, don't forget, huh? Right. That's good. Good vocabulary, five points. All right. <laughs> All right, let's go see what else is happening around here. You can still register for Vaughan Inglés 4.0, the most complete English course on the planet. Well, we hope you learned something and had a good time too here on English on the Go. Now go! Cuando las mesas quedan expuestas con sus patas boca arriba, no hay manera que recuperen su posición. Este ejemplar está destinado a una muerte casi segura. Table. Podemos observar una de las inquietantes escenas del cortejo. Pilas de mesas intentando mostrar su dominación sobre los otros machos. The Born Challenge. Choose the right question. The plane took off at 2.30. You don't know, do you? <laughs> Hurry up! The correct answer is... What time did the plane take off? My name is Layla, I am half Spanish and half American. I've been working for Run System since 2004. What do you do for Vaughan Systems, Layla? Well, I do a bit of everything. I work on the MIP, I do humanities, I work on the radio, and I've also done a little bit of television. What is the master's course like to work on? 
Well, it's a great course because they're with us for 10 months. So they're, we get them from the very beginning and we see the improvement throughout the 10 months. It's a very hard course for them as well as uh, for us because it's very challenging to have them every single day for five hours, but it's a really rewarding experience. What is the Vol method exactly? Well, the method, as we call it, is, uh, is, I mean, in my opinion, not because I work here, but it's the best method because it works. And we have the tell to ask, which is the, the, the famous thing, right? Which is one student tells another student to ask another student something. And then we have the third person, somebody saying the third person is. What qualifications do people need to work as a teacher? Well, you don't need any qualifications. You just need to be a native speaker. They teach you how to teach the method. And is the training hard? It's not easy, but it's a, it's a very rewarding experience. It's a lot of hard work, but it's very rewarding. I'm actually going to start class right now if you would like to come in and see what it's like. Absolutely. Okay. Hello everyone! Hello! So this is a master class and I'm just going to do a little quick drill so that you can see what the tell to ask method is like. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Okay, let's go! Alberto, tell Anna to ask Sofia what time she woke up this morning. Please ask her what time she woke, oh, she oh. woke up this morning. Okay, one more time. Please ask her what time she woke up this morning. Good. What time did you wake up this morning? What time or what time? What time? So give me some intonation. What time did you wake up this morning? Good, okay. Now, what does she want to know? She wants to know what time what she, time or what, what time? time? What time did? Oh, oh, careful. She wants to know what time she woke, woke up this morning. Okay, so what time she woke up this morning? One more time. What, what, what time? time she woke up this morning? Okay, good. Now, Rocío, tell us. I woke up at seven o'clock this morning. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye, guys. Hello and welcome, welcome back. Welcome to our last half hour, yes, of Baugen in Vivo. Aprende inglés TV, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 24-7, 24 hours a day, seven days a week of English. My show, Kathleen's show, and uh, many other programs designed to help you. Diseñados para ayudaros. Designed, designed to help you improve your English or to learn the language, improve your ability or maintain your current ability if you already speak English well. Okay, and today in this half hour, we're going to work on the conditionals again and on should sometimes. For example, I teach because I need money. I teach because I need money. I don't teach for free. They pay me for this. Uh, I get paid. Me pagan por estar aquí enseñando. Así lo decís en castellano. Y también en inglés se puede decir exactamente de la misma forma. They, I, me pagan. They pay me uh, to come here and teach this class on television. Pero se suele decir curiosamente una forma más pasiva o indirecta. I get paid. Literalmente consigo pagado. Literalmente, porque no tiene sentido en castellano. I get paid to come here and teach. If they didn't pay me, I wouldn't come. If I didn't get paid, I wouldn't come. Esa expresión to get paid es muy corriente en inglés. Ah, you, you work in... Uh, do you get paid for that? Yes. ¿Te pagan para eso? Yes. So, I get paid. If I didn't get paid, I wouldn't come. If they didn't pay me, I wouldn't come here. All right. Which probably is not true. Even if they didn't pay me, at least I would come and help out. I wouldn't come every day to do these classes because I need money. I'm not rich. But even if they didn't pay me, I probably would come from time to time para echar una mano, to help out, to lend a hand, prestar una mano, se puede decir, to lend a hand, to help out because it's fun uh, to teach on television. Teaching on TV is fun. It's different. We only live our life once, and when opportunities like this arise, cuando surgen, arise escrito, when opportunities like this arise, you take them. 
When opportunities like this come up, otra forma, when opportunities like this come up, you take them. Okay. Don't be risk averse. Don't exhibit aversion to risk. Okay. I teach because I need money. Okay. If I didn't need money, I wouldn't teach. And I'm here in front of you. I'm here talking to you in front of you because I'm your teacher. Okay. Como enlazo el condicional con esto. Pues si yo no fuera tu profe, no estaría aquí. If I weren't your teacher, I wouldn't be here. If I weren't your teacher, I wouldn't be here. I would be, estaría en otro sitio, en otra parte. I would be, en otra parte, como se dice. If I weren't your teacher, I wouldn't be here. Estaría en otra parte. I would be somewhere else. I would be somewhere else. Se admite también someplace else. Pero no decimos, I would be in another place. Okay? I would be someplace else. I would be somewhere else. I wouldn't be here. If I weren't your teacher, I wouldn't be here. Now, you're watching me because your television works. Porque funciona tu tele. If your television didn't work, you wouldn't be watching me now. Eso es condicional con, el condicional progresivo o continuo. No estarías viendo me ahora. If your TV, if your television set, que significa televisor, if your television set didn't work, you wouldn't be watching me now. If your English were perfect, you might not be watching me now because this program is not designed for people who speak English perfectly. It's designed for people who need to improve their command of the English language for people who need to improve their mastery of the English language. Su dominio. Mejorar su dominio. Mastery. Me encanta la palabra. Command. Me encanta incluso más. Uh, people who want to gain a good command of the English language, I recommend you stay. But if your English is perfect, there's no reason for you to be watching me now. This show is not designed for you. Okay. Now, if you want to watch it because it's strange, okay, you're welcome to stay. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not directing my, my efforts at you. I'm directing my efforts at people who need to improve or to learn or to maintain their ability. So, I'm here because I'm your teacher. If I weren't your teacher, I wouldn't be here. You're watching me because your TV works. If your TV didn't work, si no funcionara, funcionara, if your TV didn't work, you wouldn't be watching me now. Uh, you're watching me now probably because your English is not perfect. So if your English were perfect, probably you wouldn't be watching me now. Uh, you're watching me now because you like this program, maybe, which means if you didn't like this program, you would change channels. At least I think you should change the channel if you don't like this program, okay? Now, I use a microphone because I need to propagate my voice. Uh, if I didn't need to propagate my voice, I wouldn't need this microphone. If you were sitting, if all of my students were sitting here in front of me, if all my students were sitting here in front of me, estoy hablando constantemente del condicional, I wouldn't need this microphone. Just with my voice, I could teach. But because you're watching me on TV, I need the microphone. If this weren't a TV show, I wouldn't need this microphone or this microphone here on my sweater. Okay. Listen. El bebé porque es infeliz. Es un hombre infeliz. Por eso bebé. He drinks. He drinks because he's unhappy. So logically, if he weren't unhappy, he wouldn't drink. Or maybe he would drink a lot less. Some people drowned their unhappiness. Drown. Ahogarse en agua is to drown. Okay? Pero también figurativamente ahogar la infelicidad, la desgracia. Some people drown their unhappiness by drinking. Sometimes so. In this case, this man on this list, he drinks because he's, he's unhappy. If he were happy, he wouldn't drink. Probably. He probably wouldn't drink if he were happy. 
if he were a happy man. She seldom dances. Ella raramente baila. Muy pocas veces va a bailar. She seldom dances because her husband doesn't know how to dance. Poor lady. She loves to dance. But her husband doesn't like to dance, so she never dances. If her husband knew how to dance, uh, she would probably insist that they go dancing often. Okay? And, but most men don't know how to dance very well. Most men and boys and men simply don't like to dance. It's usually the case. And most women are dying to dance. And when they find a young man who dances well, that young man usually has a lot of success with women. All right, so if you're a man, especially if you're an adolescent, I recommend you learn how to dance well. All right. It opens the doors to a lot of interesting opportunities. But in this case, our friend, this lady, she seldom, 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 seldom is pocas veces, very few times, rarely, rarely, raramente, que es lo mismo que seldom. Uh, I don't use the expression rarely very often. I rarely use the expression rarely. I usually use the expression seldom. Okay, seldom. But even more, I use the expression hardly ever. Que es casi nunca. Uh, la señora casi nunca va a bailar porque su marido no sabe bailar. Okay, so she hardly ever goes dancing uh, because her husband doesn't know how to dance. Ahora, si el buen señor supiera bailar, ella insistiría en que fueran a menudo. If he knew how to dance, uh, she would probably insist that they go dancing quite often. Okay? To go dancing. I don't call you because I don't need your services. I don't call you because I don't need your services. But if I needed, si necesitase, if I needed your services, I would call you asking you for help. If you were a plumber and I had a plumbing problem in my house, I would call you. If you were an electrician and I had, si tú fueras y yo tuviera, if, I, if you were an electrician and I had, fijaos que uso el pasado en los dos casos, pero es condicional aquí, subjuntivo. If, if you were an electrician and I had, an electrical problem at home, I would call you for help. If you were a mechanic, a car mechanic, and I had a problem with my car, I would call you. Or I would take my car to your garage or to your workshop. All right? If you were a doctor and I had a health problem, maybe I would call you. If you were, if you were, if you were, a neurologist, and I had a problem with my nerves, maybe I would consult with you. If you were a bone doctor, traumatologo, como dices aquí, and I had a problem with my bones, maybe I would contact you. If you were a dermatologist and I had a problem with my skin, maybe I would talk to you. Yes. And if you were a cameraman, and I needed to have a camera pointing at me, well, I would maybe seek your advice and your help. Okay. I rent my house because I don't have enough money to buy it. I rent, alquilo mi casa, because I don't have enough money to buy it. People usually say, it's better to buy a house. I don't buy because I prefer to rent. For me, it's cheaper and more flexible, okay? If I buy a house, I have to pay taxes and notary fees. Honorarios de notaria. Fees, notary fees, taxes, and other, and the co commissions for opening a mortgage, hipoteca, which is a lot of money. Up front. Mucho dinero por delante. Up front. Dos palabras. It's a lot of money up front. <clears throat> and then you have to pay, of course, the, uh, the installments, plazos, pagos. You have to pay the installments on your mortgage. Now, uh, however, as you pay, 
conforme vas pagando, as you pay the installments on your mortgage, you slowly become the owner of your house. Well, you're the owner from the beginning, but you're the owner with a lot of debt. Deuda, debt. La B es muda en esta palabra, por favor. Debt. Se escribe debt, pero se pronuncia debt. And so you have a lot of debt, but as you continue paying, you slowly become owner with less debt. Okay? And then in the end, you can say, well, I can sell my house and gain a plusvalía, a capital gain. Se dice ganancia capital. A capital gain on the house. And it's true. If you make a calculation, often it's true that it's better to buy than to rent. But uh, when you rent, you have a lot more flexibility if you want to move. I remember some friends who bought a house. Finally, they decided to buy a house half a kilometer from where they were working because they got tired of traveling to work. So they decided to buy a house, not rent. They bought a house not far from the office. And in less than one year, the company moved to the opposite side of the city. And so they had the same problem again. If they had rented, they could move and always live relatively near their office. And the travel time for both of them would be less. Imagine living... 15 minutes or 10 minutes away from your work, on foot. You can walk to work every day. It would be very convenient, muy cómodo. In English, convenient, conveniente, no significa conveniente, significa cómodo. Es muy cómodo tener una farmacia a la, a la vuelta de la esquina. It's true. My house, I live in an area of Madrid uh, where you have many services very near. And in fact, there's a pharmacy only about three minutes from my house. And it's very convenient. Aquí no es conveniente, es cómodo. También puedes pagar esta casa en 20 cómodos plazos, in 20 convenient installments. Convenient. <clears throat> so, it's very convenient to live relatively close to your work and not to have to fight the traffic every morning in your car. Some people spend an hour, an hour and 20 minutes. Some people spend up to two hours going to work in the morning and an hour and a half going back in the afternoon. And they spend, some people spend three hours a day or more, okay, traveling to and from work, okay. Now, if you decide to rent a house, you can rent a nice house and live relatively near. And you can save a lot of money and a lot of stress living near where you work, but you need to have the flexibility. And that's why some people prefer to rent. In my country, in the United States, quite a few people prefer to rent than to own, more than here, more than here. Here, people prefer to buy, and if you really calculate financially, it's better to buy. But there are other considerations, too. I remember one man who didn't own a car, and... Um, and I said, well, Mateo, his name was Mateo, I remember, why, why don't you buy a car? He says, because I don't want to. I said, well, how do you move around? He says, well, public transport, but quite often by taxi. And I asked him, well, how many taxis a day do you catch? And he told me, I catch about an average of four taxis a day. And I said, well, how much do you spend on each taxi on the average? On the average, como promedio. How much do you spend on, the, on each taxi on the average? And he said, seven euros. And I said, well, that means you spend 28 euros a day on the average. Como media. He said, yeah, okay, third, let's say 30, 30 euros a day. And I said, and that's five days a week. He said, no, six days a week on the average. He said, okay, that's 180 euros a week. Okay. And he said, yeah, possibly 180 euros a week. And I said, that's per month. That's a lot of money. Yes, that's 360. That's 750 euros a month on taxis. He said, yeah. And that's 7,000 or 8,000 euros a year, only on taxis. And he said, yes. He said, but I can use taxis for 11 years for the price of one car. He said, you buy the car, 
If you want to buy a decent car, you see, it costs a lot of money. And then you have to buy, you have to pay the insurance for the car, which is very expensive. Then you have to pay the gasoline that you put in the car practically every week or twice a month. And then you have to put the oil in the car every X number of kilometers. Then you have to change the tires on the car once or twice during its life. Then you have to drive the car in the traffic and it takes time. You have to park the car permanently. You have to pay often a parking fee. You have to pay a parking fee. Yes, almost every day. You have to pay. And then you have to pay different park, parking lots. You know, when you take your car, you have to find a place to park. It's terrible. And then when you drive from one city to another, the police take pictures of you and you have to pay fines. And he says, in the end, it's very expensive to own a car, much more than 7,500 or 8,000 euros a year. So maybe he's right. Maybe he's right. Have you made a calculation of exactly how much it costs you to own a car, all of the costs involved, including the stress sometimes when you can't find a place to park. Okay, but that's normal. I rent my house because I don't have enough to money to buy it. If I had, si yo tuviera, if I had enough money to buy my house, I would stop renting it and I would buy it. I'm not sure the, if the owner would agree, but I would go and knock on the door and say, I would like to buy the house. And maybe he prefers to continue renting it. Okay, the next one. She doesn't understand my problems because she doesn't work. Yes, my wife. My wife doesn't work. I work. My wife doesn't work. And she doesn't understand some of my problems. If she worked, she would understand some of my problems. Condicional puro y duro aquí. Si ella trabajase, entendería mis problemas. If she worked, 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 worked. If she worked, she would understand my problems. Yes. And my good friend Manolo, my good friend Manolo, he smokes. Yeah, change over here. He smokes. And Manolo smokes because he's a very nervous person. If he weren't so nervous, he wouldn't smoke so much. Or maybe he would quit altogether. Nervous, nervous. Fijaos en la pronunciación. La O-U-S al final de las palabras en inglés nunca se pronuncian O-U-S. Por ejemplo, famoso. Famous. Fe. No famos. Okay. Famous. Nervous. Mountainous. Montañoso. Superfluous. Para nosotros. For us. Esa pronunciación, us, esa pronunciación de O-U-S al final de tantas palabras. Nervous, famous. Okay. Now, our friend Manolo, he smokes a lot because he's a very nervous person. <clears throat> If he weren't so nervous, he wouldn't smoke so much. If he weren't, 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 fijaos como pronuncio, weren't. No digo weren't, digo weren't. Weren't, como el pasado de quemar, burnt, weren't. Yeah, Manolo smokes a lot because he's very nervous. If he weren't so nervous, nervous, he wouldn't smoke so much. He would probably smoke less. He would probably cut down on his smoking, reducir, cut down on, dos preposiciones, una después de la otra. Okay, cut down on, cortar, reducir. He would cut down on his smoking. Or he would quit altogether. He would give up altogether. He would kick, dar una patada al hábito, al vicio. He would kick the habit if he weren't so nervous. So maybe what we should do with our good friend Manolo is send him to a psychologist. And the psychologist will look for ways to calm Manolo down, to make him feel calmer and not so nervous. But that's Manolo's problem, okay? That's Manolo's problem. Yes, next one. He has liver problems because he drinks too much. Drinking again. He has liver problems. Liver, liver, liver. Liver is an organ of your body right here. Liver, ígalo. 
Some people, and some people eat liver. I remember one of my classmates, not, not really a friend, but a classmate when I was in primary school, elementary school. I remember his name, Martin Brawing. He ate raw liver every day for, for breakfast. Hígalo crudo, ¿cómo es posible? Uh, his mother made him eat raw liver. And he said he liked it. He had been eating it all his life. Okay, all right. But our other friend, Pepe, has liver problems because he drinks too much. If you drink too much, you suffer cirrhosis of the liver, and it can kill you. Okay, alcoholics often have liver problems. Alcoholics. Fijaos, yo no digo the alcoholics. En español sí se diría. Los alcohólicos tienen problemas de, de, de hígado, habitualmente. Los alcohólicos. En inglés no, alcoholics. Si yo dijera the alcoholics, el interlocutor preguntaría a qué grupo específico de alcohólicos está, te estás refiriendo. All right. Alcoholics. Alcoholics have liver problems because they drink too much. If they didn't drink so much, in our case of Pepe, who drinks too much, if he didn't drink so much, he wouldn't have liver problems. Liver problems. He wouldn't have liver problems if he didn't drink so much. Okay. And one more before we finish. My car is wet because it's raining. Yeah. If it weren't raining. Otra vez la pronunciación de wedent is weren't. Es una sola sílaba. Si sí, cuando lo ves, ves weren't. Pero cuando hablas, dices weren't. Okay. If it weren't raining now, my car wouldn't be wet. My car would be dry. And if it weren't raining now, uh, I would not only have a dry car, but I would be dry myself. Okay. I think it's time for me to say goodbye for now. Uh, the class is over. The time is up. It's been a pleasure. I've been here for two hours with you. I hope you've enjoyed the program. I'll be here every day. In fact, I think they repeat this program several times during the day. So you have the opportunity to see me many times and see other people on Aprende Inglés TV and benefit from the effort we are making to, uh, to give you this opportunity. It's a lot of fun for us, and we are trying to make it not only productive for you, but a lot of fun for you, too. We're trying our best, okay? And I imagine that every month that passes, we will get better at what we do. And your English will get better, too. Okay, see you again very soon. Bye-bye. Pronunciation. Housie. Housie. How's he getting there? How's he getting there? How's he feeling? How's he feeling? How's he gonna survive? How's he going to survive? How's he? How's he? Pronunciation. Choose the right question. We'll be ready in 10 minutes. You don't know, do you? <laughs> Hurry up! The correct answer is... When will you be ready? Tell her to ask me where I'm from. Ask him where he's from. Where are you from? What does she want to know? She wants to know where you're from. Very good, I'm from Cork. Tell her to ask me where Cork is. Ask him where Cork is. Where is Cork? Good. What does she want to know? She wants to know where's Cork. Again? She wants to know where's Cork. She wants to know where Cork is. Where Cork is. I repeat. She wants to know where Cork is. Very good, and repeat. She wants to know where Cork is. Very good. Now, some mastering the interrogative. Okay? I give you the answer, and you give me the question. Okay? The book is yellow. What color is the book? Good, and again? 
What color is the book? Okay, there are five people in the waiting room. How many people are in the waiting room? Now listen carefully. There are five people in the waiting room. There are five people in the waiting room. Mm -hmm. Try that. There are five people in the waiting room. What's the question? How many people are there in the waiting room? Very good. And repeat. How many people are there in the waiting room? Good. One more time. How many people are there in the waiting room? Very good. It's 160 miles from Cork to Dublin. How many miles is it from Cork to Dublin? Very good. Another way of saying it. How, how far? How far away? How far is it? How far is it from Cork to very, Dublin? Very good. And repeat. How far is it from Cork to Dublin? Very good. Okay. Entonces, la idea es que los profesores son muy dinámicos, muy rápidos, corrigen cada error, cada error y motivan al, a los alumnos como locos. Te esperamos en clase. Which one is correct? You don't know, do you? <laughs> come on, come on! The correct answer is... C. Tell me. Ahora debemos andar con mucho cuidado. Los trepadores son el más mortífero animal de toda la jungla. Espero que no nos vean. Fans. Creo que nos han visto. Oh, cuidado, sí. Uno se lanza. The Bone Challenge. What's the missing word? Do you know the right answer? Chop, chop. The correct answer is... A. He saw another woman. The Born Challenge. Which one is correct? Come on, come on! The correct answer is... A. Do you agree with him? The Born Challenge! Choose the right question. He did it because I paid him. You don't know, do you? <laughs> Chop, chop. The correct answer is... Why did he do it? Sit down. There we go. Okay, now. Are you ready? Okay, today I have Monica with me. Monica, Monica. I have a canción. Have you heard the song about you, Monica? My first one, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah? How does it go? How does Mo it go? Monica, tu nombre es <laughs> uh, It's a Spanish song. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm Monica, Monica. No. La -da 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 -da. I'm not sure. Ask me if Monica is a common name in the English-speaking world. Is Monica a common name in the English-speaking world? Word or world? world? 
word is la, la palabra habla inglesa, the world. Monica is a relatively common name, not uncommon. Ask me how many Monicas there are in the English-speaking world. How many Monicas are there in the English-speaking world? Approximately 200,000, <laughs> yeah. Ask me how I know that. How do you know that? I love statistics, and so I memorize statistics, okay? Monica, 200,000 Monicas. That's a lot of Monicas. It is. You know? Uh, how many Monicas, what's the population of Spain? Uh, around 50, 40 something, 45. Good, <laughs> 45 million. So, out of 45 million people, how many Monicas do you think there are? I don't know. We'll make a guess. All right, mm -hmm. an educated guess. Two hundred. No, uh, no, not uh, many. Maybe twenty thousand. Twenty thousand only. Twenty thousand okay. only. No, uh, ask me why I know this. How do you know this? Or why do you know this? No, because about a year, no less, about six months ago, I was looking at a statistical, well, a page of statistics about surnames, mm -hmm. last names, apellidos in Spain, Spanish. The most common. Uh, surname is Perez. And I remember I was surprised because there are only about 80,000 Perez in Spain. Okay. I said, oh my God, okay. And then, then I think the next was González or García, I don't remember, very common uh, surnames. And I was surprised that there were not so many. And it also said where you found the most. For example, Perez was very common in the center of Spain, González in, the, in Navarra. Mm -hmm. I was saying things, it was very interesting, okay. And I would, I would like to look at that again. All right. Dominando el interrogativo. Mastering the interrogative. This is easy. Formulating questions, young lady. I will say the affirmative, and you say the question okay. that would elicit. Interesting verb. Used a lot in English with no translation. To elicit is a sacar, son sacar, extraer. Una, uh, una reacción ante un estímulo. Mm -hmm. All right. If I hit you on the head, or if I throw this water into your face, it will elicit a reaction. Do you yes. understand? Yes, I do. <laughs> All right. So, I will say the affirmative, and you formulate the interrogative that would naturally elicit dicho okay. afirmativo. Okay? I called him from Burgos. Where did you call him from? Good, repeat. Where did you, where, where, where did you call him from? Yeah, where did you call him from? I called him from Burgos. Uh, this book is for Pauline. Who is this book for? No, no, no puedes tocar. Who is that? Who is that book for? All right, this book is for Pauline. That letter is from Andrew. Who is that letter from? Who is that letter from? Uh, when you saw me, I was talking to Jennifer. What were you doing when I saw you? Well, I was standing talking on the phone, okay? okay. <coughs> and now, when you saw me, Monica, okay. when you saw me, I was talking to Jennifer. Who were you talking to when I saw you? Good. I was talking to Jennifer. Okay. Yeah. I, you, don't, you have nothing against Jennifer, do you? No, I don't. All right, good. Do you know Jennifer? No, I don't. All right. Ask me if I know her well. Do you know her well? Yes, I do. Ask me where she's from. Where is she from? Where is she from? Where is she from? Uh, she's from Kansas. Ask me how long I've known her. How long have you known her? I've known her for about, well, I've known her since 1970. So I've known her for 38, 37 and a half years. Ask me, ask me where she's from in Kansas. Where is she from in Kansas? She's from Salina. Yeah, Salina, de Sal. Mm -hmm. All right, so we say, they say in Kansas, Salina. Yes. And ask me if, how often I see her. How often do you see her? Well, the last time I saw her was in 1973. Okay. But I was talking to her the other day. Okay. All right. Ask me why I was talking to her. Why were you talking to her? Because I found her over the internet. Ask me why I found her. Why did you find her? Because she's the governor of Kansas now. All right. So, she's a very important lady. Mm -hmm. All right. So, the next one. I'm worried about the new project. What are you worried about? Yeah. I'm worried about the new project. Ask me if I worry a lot. Do you worry a lot? No, I don't. Ask me if I'm worried about anything right now. Are you worried about anything right now? Yes, I am. Ask me what I'm worried about. What are you worried about? I'm worried about the future of mankind. <laughs> All right. Ask me if I lose sleep about that. Do you, sleep? Do, you, do you lose sleep about that? No, I don't. Do you, do you worry about the future of mankind? 
Well, not now. <laughs> <laughs> not really. <laughs> to be worried, are you concerned about the future of mankind? Not really. Not really? Do you think mankind will survive the next millennium, this millennium? I think so, yeah. You think so? Do you think in a thousand years, people like you and me will still be here? I think so, yes. You think so? Do you think they will be more intelligent or less intelligent than we are today? That I don't know. Well, what do you think? Come on. More intelligent. Mojate. They will be more intelligent. <laughs> They'll be more intelligent, okay. And do you think technology will be able to solve every problem? Not in every problem. All right. Do you think psychological problems will still exist in yes. a thousand years? Yes, I think so. All right. Do you think um, uh, physical problems, physical of, uh, problems of, for example, food, uh, clothing, do uh, you think they will still exist? Probably not. Probably not. Do you think all of our material concerns, preocupaciones materiales, do you think all our material concerns will be solved? I, in think, one I think we'll be able to create new ones. New ones, okay. Do you think poverty will exist? I think so, yes. You think so? La pobreza existirá? I think so. All right. Technology is advancing very, very fast now. Very, very fast. Okay. In most areas, in some areas it isn't. Ask me where technology is not moving fast, in my opinion. Where is technology not moving fast, in your opinion? Uh, middle, medium technology, for example, in the technology of uh, cars, mm -hmm. automobiles. The engines today are exact, practically exactly the same as 100 years ago. How do you say the combustion interna? You don't know. Inside. Internal. Internal. Combustion. Okay. Yes. Uh, an, an engine is based on, a, on explosions, mm -hmm. small explosions, but powerful. They're strong. You can, if you put your finger, it's not possible, of course, because it's inside a cylinder. But if you could insert your finger into the cylinder when the piston goes up and the spark ignites, you understand ignites? Mm -hmm. The... Um, the gas, and bam, it pushes the piston down, you could lose your finger. That's how strong it is. And ask me how many explosions per minute there are in a car. How many explosions per minute are there in a car? Well, it depends on if it's a four-cylinder engine or a six-cylinder or an eight-cylinder engine. Uh, but you can easily have 400, 500 explosions per minute. Well, you know, you say uh, cuatro, cuatro mil revoluciones por minuto. Mm -hmm. That means the crankshaft is turning 2,000 times or 4,000 times a minute. Okay, that's, that's fast. So those pistons are moving up and down, and it's incredible. And the timing is perfect. Okay, you say synchronization? Mm -hmm. In este caso. Because from the gas tank, el depósito de combustible, gasolina, en este mm -hmm. caso, the gas tank, it sends gasoline, the pump, el bomba de gas, sends gasoline to the, <clears throat> and it's changed into a vapor and injected. It's injected with injectors. And at the same time, the electrical system is sending an electric discharge that creates a spark. How do you say chispa? Spark. Spark. And they coincide. Bam. At the same time, the piston is coming up. And when the piston comes up and compresses the air and heat, it gets hot in that little chain, what's left of the chamber. Mm -hmm. And then boom, pow, it sends it down. And the push rod, what, you know, the taque, it pushes down, the push rod goes down and moves the, uh, moves the, the, guanyal, the crankshaft. And it's m totally mechanical, totally mechanical. All right, the basic elements of a car, even today, even the best cars in the world, the cars you see that our friend Mr. Alonso is driving, mm -hmm. is based on a very rudimentary uh, technology that has not changed in a hundred years. All right, so um, in some areas, things have advanced a lot, and others, they're apparently not, mm -hmm. if you really think about it. But in a thousand years, <coughs> will we need cars? You don't know? No. All right. Will we need tomography in a thousand years? Maybe, yes. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Okay. This is too <coughs> esoteric. Okay. <coughs> Mastering the interrogative. I'm nervous about my presentation tomorrow. What are you nervous about? What are you nervous about? 
I'm nervous about my presentation tomorrow. Ask me what, uh, what kind of presentation I'm going to give. What kind of presentation are you going to give? I'm going to give a presentation on irregular verbs. Okay. Yeah. Ask me how long it's going <coughs> to last. How long is it going to last? It's going to last for one hour. Ask me if I can fill up an hour on irregular verbs. Can you fill up an hour with ir irregular verbs? Can you fill up an hour on irregular verbs? On. On. Sobre. Okay. El tema de. Uh, fill up an hour with irregular verbs, parece que físicamente <laughs> estás colocando verbs irregulares dentro de esa hora. To fill up, yeah, I can fill up an hour on irregular verbs. It's quite easy. Ask me how many irregular verbs there are in the English language. How many irregular verbs are there in the English language? Verbs? Verbs. Good. Verbs son eructos. Okay, verbs. <laughs> eructos irregulares, no hay muchos. Oh, bueno, a lo mejor hay muchos. <laughs> verbs. Uh, there are around 150 irregular verbs in the English language. Ask me how many, how many of them I consider important. How many of them do you consider important? Uh, for verbal speech, I only consider about 70. 72, 73, 75 maybe as important. Ask me what the most important irregular verb is. What is the most important irregular verb? Verb? Verb. Uh, probably, well, probably no. <coughs> to be. The verb to be, of course, is the most important irregular verb. And... Um, the next one, I'm thinking about an old girlfriend of mine. What are you thinking about? Yeah, I'm thinking about an old girlfriend of mine. Ask me if I know where she lives. Do you know where she lives? Yes, I do. <coughs> Ask me where she lives. Where does she live? She lives between Dallas <coughs> and the Red River. Yeah. Do you know where the Red River is? No, I don't. Have you ever seen the Red River? No, I haven't. Yes, you have. Oh, really? Yeah. Ask me where you have seen the Red River. In the Grand Canyon? <laughs> no. No. Okay. no. Have what? you seen the Grand Canyon? Yes, I have. Now, what river passes through the Grand Canyon? I don't remember. Come on, you say El Gran Cañón del Colorado. Cañon? Oh, Colorado. Red River, okay. <laughs> del Colorado, pero eso no es the Red River. Oh, okay. No, no, El Rio okay. Rojo is the Red River. Oh, okay. El Rio Colorado in English is the Colorado River. Okay. There are two Colorado rivers, one that goes from the Rocky Mountains in Colorado to the, um, I don't know what you call it, El Mar. There's an in-between, Baja California and uh, Mexico. Mexico it goes mm -hmm. into that area. And it passes through, it creates the Grand Canyon. Okay, now on the other side, there's another one that goes the other way. It's called the Colorado that uh, empties into, se vacía al, desemboca en. It empties into the Gulf of Mexico, mm -hmm. and it passes through Texas. It's less important, <coughs> but it's an important river, but less important than the other, less mm -hmm. famous. Okay. Now, the Red River is not the Colorado. Okay. Okay, now, although Colorado in Espanol significa rojo. Okay. Now, uh, the Red River is the border between Texas and Oklahoma. And I'm sure you've seen, ask me where you have seen the Red River. What have I seen, the, the Red River? On Hollywood movies. Okay. Have you ever seen a Western? Yes, I have. Have you ever seen a Western where the cows are crossing a river? Yes, I have. Of vacas? Thousands of cows. That's the Red River. Okay. Okay. <laughs> because the cowboys, the oh, the real cowboys, not the Hollywood cowboys, the real cowboys moved cows over a distance of about 2,500 kilometers, 2,000 kilometers, from the south of Texas to Kansas. <coughs> okay. Ask me why they moved the cows to Kansas. Why do they move the cows to Eso Kansas? Why path. did they move the cows to Kansas? Uh, because the cows uh, needed to go to the slaughterhouse. Mm -hmm. Okay, how do you say slaughterhouse in Spanish? Matadero. El matadero. The slaughter, 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 is uh, matar tipo matanza, o sea, mm -hmm. animales. También se usa figurativamente cuando es una diezmar una población, to slaughter, mm -hmm. okay? The slaughterhouse was located in Kansas City, the closest, the nearest slaughterhouse. And uh, the railroad, the railroad, you understand? Mm -hmm. The ferrocarril. The railroad started in Dodge City, Kansas. That was, you know, at that time, it's very expensive to build railroads, you know. Especially in Spain was the orografía. Mm -hmm. There's so many mountains. But in, in, in the United States, is so big, you know. Yes. It's a lot of, a lot of steel, acero, a lot of wood, okay, and a lot of workers and a lot of kilometers and kilometers and kilometers. So they built railroads from Chicago to St. Louis to the Mississippi River. From St. Louis crossing Missouri territory 
Missouri was not a state yet, to Kansas City. And then from Kansas City, into the West. Okay, it's very far. And they reached Dodge City and they stopped. That's where the railroad stopped until the next five years later they started mm -hmm. again. And the cows were moved to Dodge City to get onto the train and to go to Kansas City, yeah, to be slaughtered. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the cowboys went with the cows and perhaps 20 cowboys and 10,000 cows. All right. And we've seen it on the movies. And they were moving the cows from the south of Texas where there were millions of stray cows. Stray. Vine la misma raíz que extraviado. Stray. Como bandeja. Tray. Con ese delante. Stray. Okay. Stray cows, which are cows with no owners. So the businessmen sent the cowboys to round up cows, stray cows, and to move them north. Mm -hmm. Now, to move them north was 2,000 kilometers. So they spent six or seven months. They went in the late winter, very early spring, rounded up the cows and began to move. And they needed to arrive by September because the weather was getting too cold. Mm -hmm. And the cows could eat the grass along the way in the springtime and in the summer. You understand? Mm -hmm. So all of them were going at the same time, what we call cattle drives. Conducciones de ganado. Cattle is ganado, cattle. vacuno, ganado vacuno. Cattle. Y ganado en general, ¿cómo se dice? I don't know. How do you say existencia, so stock? Stock. Stock. Okay. How do you say vivo? Um, Estamos en vivo, hoy. Live. Live. Vivo, existencia es Live stock. Livestock. Okay, livestock. Have you ever heard of livestock? No, the word? I haven't. Livestock is ganado. Lanar, ovino, uh -huh. porcino, vacuno, bovino. Several of those are the same. You say ganado lanar y ganado ovino, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. You say bovino y ga vacuno, it's the same thing. What's the difference between ganado bovino and ganado vacuno in Spanish? Nothing. <laughs> uh, is know. one for milk and the other for meat? Or what? You don't know? I don't know. <laughs> I don't either. Okay. But in any case, cattle, escrito catle, doble t en medio, uh, es ganado ovi, digo bovino o vacuno. Mm -hmm. All right? And these cattle, longhorns, those cuernilargos, okay, they were moved north and eating grass along the way. And the first part was Comanche country. And then when they crossed the Red River, it became Osage Indian, Shawnee country, other types of tribes. Then when they went into Kansas, it was more protected by cowboys, well, by the law officers and by the, the cavalry, caballería, okay. okay, the cavalry. And so they went to Dodge City. And they, all the cattle drives arrived in Dodge City in a period of one month. Okay? And the cowboys were paid in, on one day everything for the seven months of work. So they received a lot of money mm -hmm. when they reached Dodge City. All right? And so the first thing they did was to take a bath and go to the saloon to look for a drink and women. And so it all, it all happened in a period of one month. So they said, Dodge City, Ciudad Cine. Okay. It was very difficult. It was a lawless. It was not true because there, was, there were police there, the marshals, Wyatt Earp, Bat Masterson, very famous people. Have you ever heard of Wyatt Earp? Yeah, in a movie. Okay, well, have you ever heard of? <coughs> simply of. Okay. Si hubieras dicho, si yo hubiera dicho, have you ever heard from? Si no tiene noticias de? Okay, so you've heard of Wyatt Earp. Well, he was a marshal there. A United States Marshal. Mm -hmm. Now, sheriff, sheriff is a local person. Marshal is federal. Okay. okay. So before the um, appearance of the FBI, the federal FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the person of the marshal was the representative of the law, mm -hmm. federal law, in the different territories of the United States. And he was a marshal in uh, Dodge City. So he made sure law and order prevailed. Do you understand? Yes. Law and order, lay orden, okay? And it was a wild town, but only for one or two months, okay? okay. <laughs> the rest of the year was very calm with the families living there, okay? But that's where the railroad ended, okay? And later the railroad continued 
but they didn't build a ramal or something. They didn't build a branch to Texas, so mm -hmm. they needed to continue going up. Okay, but this happened over a period of about 15 or 20 years. It was the golden age, the glorious period of the cattle drives. Okay, ask me if my ancestors were involved in those cattle drives. Were your ancestors <coughs> involved in those cattle drives? No, they weren't, but they saw them because they were living in Texas at that time. Ask me when my uh, family moved to Texas. When did your family move to Texas? Uh, they moved to Texas in 1842. 1842. Uh, ask me why. Ask me where they lived before moving to Texas. Where did they live before moving to Texas? They lived in Missouri. Now, is Missouri west of the Mississippi or east of the Mississippi? I don't know. Ask me. Is, is Missouri west of the Mississippi or east of the Mississippi? It's west of the Mississippi. Okay. Every American knows the east or west of the Mississippi. That's, mm -hmm. that's the orientation point in the United States, the Mississippi River. It's just west. St. Louis, Missouri is located on the Mississippi. Mm -hmm. So the Mississippi divides Tennessee and Illinois from Missouri. Mm -hmm. Okay, from Missouri. And so um, it's the Mississippi River. And then um, my ancestors, my great-great-grandfather and his family were living in Missouri. Ask me why they went to Texas. Where did they go to Texas? Good, repeat please. Why did, they, why did they go to Texas? On doctor's orders, on doctor's recommendation. Ask me if my great-great-grandfather had a problem. Did your great-great-great-grandfather Dos veces. Too. Great, great grandfather had a problem, have. have a problem? Mi tatarabuelo, yes. Ask me what kind of problem he had. What kind of problem did he, did he have? He had allergies, asthma. Okay. And so the doctor recommended going to Texas because the climate in central and west Texas is drier. Okay, in Missouri it's a bit humid okay. because of the Missouri River and the Mississippi River are tremendous rivers. And the Missouri crosses directly across Missouri territory and, the Mississi and goes into the Mississippi at St. Louis. Okay? So they went to Texas and arrived in 1842. Ask you if Texas was a territory of the United States at that time. Was Texas a territory of the United States at that time? No, it wasn't. Ask if it belonged to Mexico. Did it belong to, Mex to Mexico? No, it didn't. Ask you what its status was. What was its status? It was an independent country. Okay. Yeah. Ask me how long Texas was an independent country. How long was Texas an independent, an independent country? For nine years. From 1836. You've heard of the Alamo, you know? Yes. Yeah. That was in 1836 to 1845. But they decided to join uh, the Union because it was in opinion of the Texas politicians and leaders, it was a better idea to join the Union and not to be located between two big countries, Mexico and the United States. So they mm -hmm. decided to join the United States. And ask me um, if my, if my great-great-grandfather got better in Texas. Did your great-great-grandfather get better in Texas? I don't know, but he died six years later okay. when he was still young. So apparently it was not the best recommendation, all right, he died. And then my great-grandfather was only about 10 years old at that time. And he was the eldest son. So he was the man of the house. Wow. And he did become a very serious, responsible man. And we can continue the story another day. But it's an interesting story of the tech, my family. The different lines of my family, they were all in Texas mm -hmm. very early, okay? And it's quite interesting. It's quite interesting stories, I can tell you. But we have to go. Well, you have to go. Techo. Okay. I'm going to kick you out. But I'm going to continue with you because I'll be back in just a few minutes. So please, don't go too far away. Stay close to the TV because I'll be back in five minutes. Thank you. Pronunciation. Coming. Coming. Come and see what I've found. Come and see what I found. She said she'd come and see us. She said she'd come and see us. Will you come and help me? Will you come and help me? Come on. Come on. Pronunciation. What 
What's the missing word? Do you know the right answer? Not much time left. The correct answer is... B. I haven't been to Barcelona. The Born Challenge. Which one is correct? Do you know the right answer? Come on! The correct answer is... A. Can you take a photo of us? Pronunciation The thing is... The thing is... The thing is we have to leave soon. The thing is we have to leave soon. The thing is that we can't afford it. The thing is that we can't afford it. The thing is he lost his phone. The thing is he lost his phone. The thing is... The thing is... Pronunciation The Born Challenge Which one is correct? You don't know, do you? <laughs> come on, come on! The correct answer is... C. I have mine, they have theirs. The Born Challenge What's the missing word? Quickly! You're running out of time! The correct answer is... B. You must study hard. El paraguas tiene uno de los rituales de aparamiento más bellos de todo el reino animal. ¡Qué movimientos! ¡Qué soltura! Umbrella. Oh. Vemos cómo escapa grácilmente, con dulzura, con delicadeza. Hello and welcome back. Welcome back to a new program, another edition of Vaughan en Vivo. Vaughn Live. Yes, Vaughn, so you. Okay? Vaughn. And I'm here, as you know, as every day, in fact, several times during the day, I'm here to help you with your English. And I am here to remind you that you need to strengthen your arms. Okay? You need to strengthen your hands. You need to strengthen your shoulders. And you need to strengthen your back. Strength is fortaleza o fuerza. And strengthen, and ya leyendo una N, is fortalecer o reforzar. And you need to strengthen your arms because you need to pull. Porque sois remeros. Eh? You're rowing in the big boat, como los vikingos de antaño. Row. And me, I'm the man hitting the drum, el gran tambor. And you row to that. And if you develop strong arms and you row, then our ship, which is learning English, will reach the promised land, la tierra prometida del inglés, sooner. So the stronger you develop your arms and back and shoulders and hands, the quicker, the sooner you will learn English. Cuanto más fuerte, más pronto. Cuanto más fuerte remas, más pronto llegamos al buen, a buen puerto. Okay? The, the more you row, the stronger you row. Remar is to row, como fila. Front row, back row, third row. Pero como verbo, row, R-O-W, is remar. And you have to row, and row very strong. 
I can't row for you. I'm sorry. I can't learn English for you. You have to learn it. Okay? And that means rowing and rowing and rowing. But I will encourage you. Okay? Os animaré. En cada paso. Os alentaré. I will encourage you. And if you become demoralized, I will cheer you up. Come on, Paco, come on. Maria, come on. Blanca, come on. Jennifer, row. Okay? And I will help you. Okay? With my drum and with my words. Okay? But you have to do the work. Now, today, we have about 20 minutes. And in this first segment, the first half hour of this program, I have two friends and students, one of whom I think you know. Sitting on my right is Annette. How are you? Fine, thank you. Are you glad to be here? Of course, a lot. Are you nervous now? No, I'm not. Did you see yourself on TV last night? Yesterday night. Last night? Last night. Okay, were you impressed? In the first minute, no. Yes. No. No. No, excuse me, impressed. Siempre significa impresionado de bien. Positivo. Positivo. Nunca negativo. Uh. That sounds, that reminds me of that Dutch coach. But listen, cuando, es que aquí en España es muy corriente oír, vi el accidente, era muy impresionante. Nunca en inglés se puede decir eso. Uh. Si ves un accidente, era shocking. It made a strong impact. O me causó una fuerte impresión. Eso sí, it, I saw the accident. People were injured. And it made a strong impression on me. Pero no puedes decir, I was impressed. I was impressed is always something fantastic. Wow. I'm impressed. Estoy impresionado con tu progreso. Wow. Fantastic. That's impressed. So when you saw yourself last night, it was a strong impact. It made a strong impression. The first minute. But you were not impressed. No, I wasn't. <laughs> okay, so it made a strong impression. But in the end, in the end, did you like it? Yes, I liked it. Okay, or yes, I did. Okay, do you know Pedro? Yes, I know him. Okay, Pedro, how are you today? Fine, thank you, and you? Okay, fine. Fine. Are you nervous today? Yes, I am. Ask him if he is a nervous person by nature. Are you a nervous person by nature? I think I am. Ask him if he's, ask him if he's married. Are you married? Yes, I am. Ask him if he has any kids. Do you have any kids? Just one. Just one. Ask him how old. Yeah, ask him if it is. If it. Voy con it aquí. Ask him if it's a boy or a girl. It's a boy? No, pregunta. Uh, is it a boy or a girl? It's a boy. Ask him how old he is. How old is the boy? He's 13. Ask him what his name is. What's his name? His name is Eduardo. Eduardo. Ask him if Eduardo is an intelligent young man. Is Eduardo an intelligent young man? He is. Yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> Ask him if he's growing fast. Is he growing fast? Yes, he is. Ask him if he is as tall as his father. Is he taller as no. his father? Ask him if he is as tall as his father. Is he as tall as his father? Not as yet. you? Not yet. Ask him how tall Eduardo is. How tall is Eduardo? Uh, about this size. Okay, well ask, ask Pedro how tall he is. How, t how tall are you? I am uh, a hundred... One, no, say so one meter. Uh, one meter and 84 centimeters. No. Okay, so one meter, 84. Ah, one meter, one meter, 84. Okay, you're one meter eighty-four. Yes, I am. So, ask him how tall he thinks Eduardo is. How tall do you think Eduardo is? One meter sixty-five. Okay, ask him how tall his wife is. How tall is your wife? One meter seventy-five. Wow, mm. your wife is tall. Yes, she is. So, ask him if he thinks Eduardo is going to be tall. Do you think Eduardo is going to be tall? I think so. Ask him how tall he thinks Eduardo will be as an adult. How tall, how tall mm -hmm. do you think Eduardo will be? Como adulto. As? As an adult. Okay, as an mm -hmm. adult. Uh, probably one meter ninety. One meter ninety. Mm -hmm. Ask if Eduardo plays basketball now. Does uh, your son play basketball now? No, he doesn't. Ask him if he's interested in sports. Is he interested in sports? Yes, he is. Ask him, if he's, ask him why he isn't interested in basketball. Why isn't he interested in basketball? Because mm, he swims. He swims. Ah, he's a swimmer. Yes. Okay. Ask him if he's a, a, a long distance swimmer. Is he a long distance swimmer? Uh, he swims any kind of. He, no he swims any kind of um, distance. 
Okay, he swims mm -hmm. any kind of distance. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Ask him how old Eduardo was when he learned how to swim. How old was your son when he learned? Uh, I think he was. Let her finish. Oh, yes, sorry. Ask him how old uh, his son was when he learned how to swim. How old was your son when he learned how to swim? Mm -hmm. He was three years old. Three years old, mm -hmm. okay. Ask if he swims every day. Does he swim every day? No, he swims four days a week. Ask him if his school has a swimming team. Uh, does his school has a swimming pool? No, swimming pool, no. It's, well, vamos con eso. Vamos a decir, first, ask him if his school has a swimming pool. Does the school has a swimming pool? Okay, hay un pequeño error, pequeño, no, grande, in, a, in that sentence. Repeat, does his school... Does his school have a oh. swimming pool? No, it doesn't. Ah, ask him if the school has a swimming team. Does the school have a swimming team? No, it doesn't. Ask him what ask him if he belongs to the swimming federation. Does he belong to the swimming federation? Yes, he does. All right. Ask him if he if he practices in a pool near near their house. Does he practice in a school in a pool? Does he practice in a pool near your house? The pool is 15 minutes away by ask, car. By car. Ask him if, if he, ask Pedro, if he takes his son to the pool every day. Do you take your son to the pool every day? Sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't. Okay, ask him how he goes when, he, when Pedro doesn't take him. How does he go when you, doesn't, when you don't take him? Good, perfect, auto repeat. How, how does he go when you don't take him? My wife take, it, take him. Pero no, no, My wife it. take him. I still don't understand. My wife takes him. <laughs> My wife takes him. Okay. And uh, ask him if his wife has a car. Uh, does your wife have a car? Yes, she does. All right. Uh, and uh, ask him if she uses it every day. Does she use it, it every day? Uh, fine. Creo que lo has hecho bien, pero I want to hear it a second time. Does she use it every day? Use it, it? yes. Use it. Use it. Use it. Does use it. she use it every day? Yes. Yes, she does. Ask her if she takes Eduardo to school. Does she take Eduardo to school? Not now. Not now. No. Ask him how Eduardo goes to school. How does your son go to school? He goes by foot. No, he goes on foot. On foot. Mm -hmm. He goes on foot. Pero sabes como lo decimos los nativos? No, oh, he don't. walks. Uh -huh. He walks. Okay. He walks. All right. He walks to school every day. Ask him how far the school is from his house. How far is the school, the school for, from your house? Ah, it takes only five minutes. It takes only five minutes, okay. Mm -hmm. And ask him, ask him how he goes to school if it's raining cats and dogs. How does he go to school when it's raining cats and dogs? Well, he uses an umbrella. He uses an <laughs> umbrella. Okay, fine. And ask him how long he has been going to that particular school. How long has he been going to that particular school? He has been going for there, there for four years. Okay, he's been going there for four years. Mm -hmm. All right, ask him if he likes it. Does he like it? Yes, he does. Ask him if he's a good student. Is he a good student? He tries hard. Good, all right. Ask him what his favorite subject is. What is his favorite subject? Maths. Maths. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ask Pedro if he helps his son with his homework. Do you help him with his homework? My wife does it. Oh, your wife. My wife does. Does. Oh. My wife. My, me mujer. See. Mm -hmm. Okay. So your wife helps him. Ask him. Ask Pedro if his wife has a university degree. Uh, does your wife have a university degree? Yes, she does. Okay. Repeat the question, please. Does your wife have an university? Uh. Does your wife have a university degree? Yes, she does. All right, good. Bring me the camera. Okay. I committed an error that is, does your wife have a university degree? University empieza por vocal. Sin embargo, es sonido de griega. You, university, university. Does your wife have a university degree? Un unicornio, a unicorn, a universal question. A uh, va delante de sonidos de consonante y an ante sonidos de vocal. La U de universidad, university, es sonido de consonante. 
es sonido de Y. University. Ask if his wife has a university degree. Does your wife have a university degree? Yes, she does. Okay, ask him if his wife is a speech therapist too. Is your wife a speech therapist too? No, she's not. Okay, so you're a speech therapist, but your wife isn't. Yes. Luego peda. Mm -hmm. Okay, ask if his wife is a mathematician. Is your wife a mathematician? No, she's not. Ask him if she's an engineer. Is she an engineer? No, she's not. Ask him, ask him what degree she has. What degree does she have? She's a lawyer. She's a lawyer? Yes. Ask him if his wife practices law. Uh, does your wife practice uh, law? No, she doesn't. Ask him if she's working now. Is she working now? Yes, she is. But, but not in a legal activity? No. Okay. Ask him if his wife works in a big organization. Uh, does your wife work in a bigger organization? Bigger? No, no, big. Does your wife work in a big organization? Yes, she does. Ask him if she works in the public sector. Does she work in the public section? Uh-uh. Look, there are two sectors in the economy, the public sector and the private sector. A sector. Sector. Ask him if she works in the public sector. Does she work in the public sector? No, she doesn't. Ah, so she works in a large organization, is that correct? Yes. In the private sector. Yes. Ask him if she works in a bank. Uh, does she work in a bank? Yes, she does. Ask him if she works in the human resources department. Does she work in the human resources department? No, she doesn't. Ask him if she works in the financial area. Does she work in the financial area? Yes, she does. Ask him, uh, ask him if she works in accounting. Does she work in accounting? No, she doesn't. Ask him if she works in, in finance. Does she work in finance? Yes, she does. Ask him if she works in the headquarters of the bank. Does she work in the headquarters of the bank? No, she doesn't. Ask him if she works in a branch bank. Does she work in a branch bank? Yes, she does. All right, ask him if the branch is located near their house. Is the branch located near your house? No, it's not. Okay, ask him how long it takes his wife to go to work every day. How long does it take your wife to go... To work? To work. Mm -hmm. It takes her 30 minutes by car. Okay, it takes her 30 minutes to drive to work, mm -hmm. right? And um, ask him how long she's been working in that bank. How long uh, have she been working? Como? How long has she been working in that bank? She's been working in that bank uh, for 17 years. 17 years? Yes. Ask him if she was working in that bank when he met her. Uh, was she working in that bank when you meet her? When you came? Was she working in that bank when you met her? No, she doesn't. No, she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Repeat the question. Yes. Was she working? Ahí está. Was she? Was she no. working? Sorry. Aquí estoy usando el pasado continuo. Porque cuando tú la conociste, trabajaba. O estaba trabajando en aquel banco, o en ese banco. Was she working in that bank when you met her? No, she wasn't. Was she working when you met her? No, she wasn't. Was she a student when you met her? Yes, she was. Ask him how old he was when he met his wife. How old were you when you meet your wife? When you came? How old were you when you met your wife? <laughs> okay. I was 19. Ah, ask him how old she was. How old was she? She was 17. 17? Hmm. Yeah, we call that a cradle robber. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Salta cunas. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ask him how old he was when they got married. How old were you when you got married? I was 26. You're 26. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she was 24. Yes. All right, fine. And um, they got married, I think, in... When did you get married? What year? 1991. 1991. Now, ask him if she was working in that bank when they got married. Was she working in that bank when you got married? Yes, she was. Uh, ask him how long she had been working there when they got married. How long has she been working? No, no, escucha. Ahora estamos remontando un momento en el pasado, que es el año 91, año en el cual se casaron. Y ella ya estaba trabajando en el banco en cuestión. Entonces, yo quiero saber el tiempo que llevaba en dicho banco en el momento de que se casó. Okay. Had, not have. Hmm. Ask him how long she had been. This is plus quan perfecto. Ask him how long she had been working in that bank when they got married. How long had she been working uh, in, that? in that bank when you got married? She had been working in that bank for two years. Hmm, algo no cuadra. There's mm -hmm. something not right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, ask him <laughs> how long his wife has been working in that bank. How long has your wife been working in that bank? 
17 years. She's been working? She no, has. 17, 19 years, sorry. 19 years. Okay. Al profe no lo escapa nada. Okay. I, I have a lot of experience with this. This is, uh, even when I was 23 years old teaching English, all of my students had inconsistencies in the interrogation. Siempre encuentro anomalías en la interrogación. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to interrogate you. Okay, so she, your wife has been working in that bank for 19 years. Yes. Ask him if his wife is sick and tired of that bank. Is your wife sick and tired of that bank? <laughs> we can't say so. Okay, we will not say the name of the bank. No. <laughs> but I imagine any bank would be the same, mm -hmm. 19 years. And ask, his ask him if his wife is the manager of a branch. Is your wife the manager of a branch? No, she's not. Ask him if she has ever been a branch manager. Has she ever been a manager? A branch manager. Has Her she ever been? Gerente o jefa de sucursal, mm. director de sucursal. Has she ever been a branch manager? No, she's not a manager, a branch manager. But the question is, has she ever been in the past? Ah, no, she, she hasn't. hasn't. No. Ask him if she would like to be a branch manager. Uh, would she like to be a branch manager? No, she, she wouldn't. wouldn't. Okay, ask him if she's planning to look for another job. Is she planning to look for another job? No, she's not. Okay, so ask him what time his wife leaves home to go to work. At what time? Sina that. What time does your wife leave to go work? To go work? No, to go to work. What time does your wife leave to go to work? She leaves home at 7.30. Ask Pedro if he is still at home when she leaves. Are you still at home when she leaves? Yes, he, yes, I am. Ask him what time he leaves. At what time do you leave? Está es perfecto. At what time? What time es, do you no, leave? Está bien, pero nadie lo dice. Hmm. Okay. What time? Luego sí se dice at. What time do you leave home? I leave home at 8 o'clock, for example. But el at what time, que es correctísimo. De hecho, what time sin at no es correcto, pero el 100% de los angloparlantes decimos what time. You know, at what time. Por eso salto cuando mm -hmm. oigo at porque me suena mal, aunque es lo más cor es correcto. Okay? So, ask Pedro what time he leaves home. What time do you leave home? I leave home at 7.50. 7.50? That's yes. very, wow. He's like an engineer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ask him what time his son leaves home to go to school. What time does your son leave home to go to school? Yeah. He leaves home at 8.50. 8.50. Mm -hmm. So, ask if his son is alone at home for one hour. Is your son alone for one hour? Yes, he is. All right. And uh, ask if his son has lunch at school. Uh, does your son have lunch at school? Yes, he does. All right. Ask him if the food is good at his son's school. Is the food food good at, <laughs> his, at your son's school? He says it's not. Sorry? He says it's not. He says it's not. Mm -hmm. Ask if his son complains a lot about the food. Mm -hmm. Does your son complain a lot about the food? Yes, he does. Ask him what time his son comes home. At what, what time does your son come home? <laughs> okay. He comes home at 5 p.m. Good. Te estoy entrenando bien, eh? Lentamente. Okay. At 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. ask, Pedro, ask Pedro if his wife is at home when his son arrives. Is your wife at home when your son arrives? Yes, she is. Ask him what time his wife finishes work every day. What time does your wife finish her work every day? Okay, está bien, pero no se dice. Finish work, start work, finish work. Se dice así, son frases hechas realmente, expresiones hechas. Empezar el trabajo es to start work. Terminar el trabajo es to finish work. I start work at 7.30. I finish work at 8.30 in the evening. I work 13 hours a day. I start work, I start class, I finish class. So ask him what time his wife finishes work. What time does your fi wife finish work? She finishes at 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Ask mm -hmm. him what time she gets home. What time does she get home? She gets home at 3.40. Okay, so it takes her longer to come home mm -hmm. than to go to work. Yes. Ask him why. He told us earlier. ¿Cómo se dice anteriormente? Earlier. He told us earlier that it takes his wife 30 minutes to go to work. Now, clearly, it takes her 40 minutes to go home. Ask him why it takes her longer to go home. Why does it take her longer to go home? Because there's more traffic. There's more traffic. Ask, ask him why there's more traffic in the, at midday than in the morning. Why is there more traffic at midday than in the morning? Because there are mo more people in the street. 
in the street. No, there are more people in cars. In cars? There's more traffic. Mm -hmm. There's more traffic. That's strange because you would think, you would think that at 8 o'clock in the morning there would be a lot of traffic, people going to work. But strangely, at 3 o'clock, there are a lot of people going home. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people going home, especially people who work like your wife. Not full-time, but almost <clears throat> full-time, but they leave for civil servants, for example, go home. People who work in some of the shops go home, and people who work in the banking industry go home. And ask him what his wife does. Ask him if his wife listens to the radio while she's driving. Uh, does your wife listen to the radio when she drives? Yes, she does. Ask him if she knows English. Does she know English? Yes, she does. Ask him if she listens to our radio station. Does she listen to you? Uh, our. To our radio station? Yes, but not always. Not always. Mm -hmm. Ask him if she speaks English as well as Pedro does. Does she speak English as well as you do? She practices it uh, less than me. All right. And ask him how old she was when she started learning English. How old was she when she started learning English? She started learning English at school. Okay. Ask him if, um, ask Pedro if he has any brothers and sisters. Do you have any brothers and sisters? Yes, I do. Ask him how many he has. How many do you have? Two. I have two. Two brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. How many brothers? One brother. And one sister. And one sister. Ask him if he sees them very often. Do you see them every, very, very often? often? They live far from home. They, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, ask him if his, brothers, if his brother and sister live in Madrid. Uh, does your bro do. do your brother and sister live in Madrid? No, they don't. No. Ask him where his brother lives. Where uh, does where do your no no where does your brother live? My brother live, lives uh, in Lugo. In Lugo. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Ask him his uh, ask him where his sister lives. Where does your sister live? My sister lives in Algete. Algete, mm -hmm. north of Madrid. Mm -hmm. And ask him if his brother's wife is from Lugo. Is your brother's wife from, from Lugo? No, she's not. And ask him, what is, ask him what kind of job his brother has in Lugo. What kind of job does your brother have in Lugo? He's a teacher. He's a teacher. Mm -hmm. Ask him if he's a school teacher. Is he a school teacher? No, he's a um, institute, uh, uh, high, high school teacher. High school teacher. Okay. Está bien. Uh -huh. School teacher se, se entiende maestro mm -hmm. o maestra. High school teacher is, uh, is profesor de instituto. He's a mm -hmm. high school teacher. Ask me how much time we have left. How, mu how much time do we have left? None. We have to stop, but we'll be back in about five minutes, okay? And that's for you, too. We'll be back in about five minutes. So, see you in just a few minutes, and don't go too far away. Pronunciation. Keeps on. Keeps on. It keeps on raining. It keeps on raining. She keeps on talking. She keeps on talking. He keeps on falling over. He keeps on falling over. Keeps on. Keeps on. Pronunciation. The Bourne Challenge. Which one is correct? You don't know, do you? <laughs> Come on! The correct answer is... B. They are cousins of hers. Pronunciation. I wish I... I wish I... I wish I had more time. I wish I had more time. I wish I were rich. I wish I were rich. I wish I believed you. I wish I believed you. I wish I. I wish I. Pronunciation. The Born Challenge. Which one is correct? Do you know the right answer? Top, top. The correct answer is... B. They asked her to go there. The Born Challenge. 
choose the right question. I gave him a book. My God, you'll be a native in no time. Tick tock, tick tock. The correct answer is... C. What did you give him? Which one is correct? You haven't got all day. Come on! The correct answer is... C. I'm making dinner tonight. The Born Challenge! Which one is correct? Quickly! Hurry up! The correct answer is... B. They've taken the train. Which one is correct? You don't know, do you? <laughs> Not much time left. The correct answer is... A. That film was very boring. Which one is correct? You don't know, do you? <laughs> come on, come on! The correct answer is... A. It takes me half an hour to get to work. Hello again and welcome back to the One Minute English Class. La P y la T inglesa, las dos letras, P y T. In English, the letter P and the letter T are explosive. In Spanish, no. If you say in Spanish, T para T, un T para T, te traigo un T para T, if you put your hand in front of your mouth, T para T, you don't feel any breath. T para T. In English, especially British English, it's an explosion. T for two. You need to clean your fingers. T for two. Would you like a cup of tea? T para tea. A Brit, more than the Americans, would say, ¿Quieres una taza de té? We explode the tea in English. And the P is the same. In Spanish, uh, if you say, my father is from Paris, you say, mi papá, mi papá es de París. You put your hand in front of your mouth and you don't feel any breath. Mi papá es de París. But in English, my papa is from Paris. So, you explode the peas. Is your papa from Paris? Well, yes. And when my papa is in Paris, he has tea for breakfast. We're more explosive. Try it. Practice it a little bit. Use your hand. Don't be afraid. Don't have the famous Spanish sentido ridículo. Go into your room and by yourself and, Papa, estás en París? Estás tomando té? I'm spitting. I need to exaggerate a little bit to make my point. Do you understand? It is midweek at Vaughantown. Since arriving, the participants have been speaking English exclusively. The Spaniards are gaining confidence every day. I feel in, in the mood, I think. I feel very well. 
a lot of hours uh, speaking with uh, English speaking people who speak really quick. I think we, we are improving uh, a little bit every day. I was watching the US Open, the tennis, yeah. Uh, I was watching Rafa and Nadal. I don't like it very much. I feel better than this morning and I have to recognize uh, this morning I was uh, quite a few, quite nervous. Uh, you don't feel very good and you are not very comfortable with your English level. Sorry? I continue to sleep. <laughs> oh, wake up. Yesterday was a little difficult day because uh, at last uh, there, is, there are different accents and in fact it was very difficult to understand people. I'm very excited about today because I'm optimist with, the, with making all the, the process of the program and for improving my, my level of English and my listening level. And there's this trick you do at home when you drink a coffee or a hot chocolate. And you... I was a little bit scared but now I'm happy. Because uh, I think, well, in only two days, well, I'm speaking now well, more, more, more uh, quickly. I don't know. After breakfast, it's time for the first one-to-ones of the day. You'll see the transformation uh, Monday, Tuesday, especially by Wednesday. The ones who really, really uh, have got the confidence and, and, and they're learning, they'll just shine. The problem in, in the northern Spain is that the water is, is, is cool. From Amsterdam to The Hague, yeah. or Rotterdam. Yeah. It's very busy, the life, but uh, I like you know, the... The complete is uh, for service. I have to open a case. Yes. In a because you're speaking on a one-to-one -one basis with people all the time, they manage to tell you a great deal uh, and you can understand it because you're just concentrating on them. And you become quite close to everybody. <laughs> By the end of the week, probably we'll all be uh, real, real pals. Getting off the bus, you could see the fear um, in the Spaniards' faces and they were really quite worried about how all this was going to pan out. They are relaxing, um, they are feeling more confident because they realise that we're not here to um, ridicule them or constantly correct them. We are here for a good time to help them and have some fun. So somebody has to write the story. You're going to write the story? Okay, you're the writer. In the afternoon, the whole group comes together to take part in team building activities. We do them because obviously we have to give everyone a break in the day and they have their siesta and it's good for them to come and all get together and do something, some fun activity. The beginning of the story, let me see. No, this could be the beginning. Okay, so we're going somewhere. Uh huh. Right? This is we're gonna have a snack. Three. three phrasal verbs and three. three idioms. Yeah, three idioms and three, three yeah. phrasal verbs. Three so we, he must have been born with a silver spoon in his mouth, but I mustn't lose my head. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Two in one. Okay, who would like to go first? Let's have a volunteer group. Okay, a big round of applause for our first group. I will do group activities that are fun, but lead up to um, our Spaniards standing up and speaking to the whole room. Once upon a time, in a dinner in London, the young traveller Rob saw a beautiful waiter's called Claire. They ordered a big hamburger with fried potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a sly way of getting them to make more presentations, you know, breaking that confidence barrier that they have. And you see a marked improvement with every time they've, they've gotten up in front of the whole room and, um, and spoken in English. Nobody wants to, to be in a presentation when the speaker has a disorganized way of saying his ideas. 
Throughout the week, the Spaniards prepare a five-minute presentation, which they deliver to a small group on the final day. It gives them the opportunity to sustain the verbal production of English over a much longer period of time than they normally do. I uh, studied Basque, but not because uh, I am... Um, it's not my They're given mother, feedback and advice about their public speaking Concha. techniques. Concha, one, I think a major thing that you need to work on to, as you go ahead with this kind of project, if you do, mm -hmm. is eye contact. You rarely looked at the audience. Mm -hmm. Are you conscious of that? No, I thought that I was looking at the people. <laughs> on the other hand, you, uh, you're very natural and expressive with your with your hands and arms is a great spontaneity about that i think the remarks greg gave us after the presentation are very useful for future now to, to go back to raul the way you started wasn't as strong as the way you finished and it's true you gained confidence and security as you continued i agree totally with the comment because Usually in English, in Spanish presentation, I have the, the same mistakes and I have to improve. I decided to make the presentation about how to make a presentation, copying the presentation that Greg uh, makes to us uh, the other day. And uh, in the end, I think it has been very funny. It's important, very important too, to speak slowly, but not too slowly because it could be boring for the audience. I never is you having to speak very quickly because you speak very quickly. People doesn't understand what you are saying. One thing that is absolutely sincere, what he did, of course, was a vicious parody of someone I don't know who, <laughs> <laughs> but he showed that he had truly assimilated all the things that I was trying to communicate the other day. Much of what we understand during interaction comes from visual clues such as body language and facial expression. During the program, the participants practice non-visual communication through role play. Hello. Hi, sweetie. How are you? I'm not too bad. And you? Oh, I'm just sitting here staring out the window. The main reason we do person. telephone calls and conference calls is because Spaniards have a terrible fear of the telephone. First time I spoke on the telephone with someone, um, I was preparing what I wanted to transmit and I wanted to tell, but suddenly you realize that the other person replies you, so at that moment you are absolutely lost. I need to talk to you about Victoria and uh, Tom have been given a scenario to act uh, out the over the telephone. Out for my stag party, and uh, there was a lady there. She and I kind of hit it off. I can't believe, Ton. What, what are what, you telling me? Well, I, I'm just telling you that uh, last night, uh, you know, I'd been drinking a bit. I don't know where to go from here, but I know it would be a mistake if, if we were to carry on with the wedding. Both of us very much got into the, uh, the storyline. It's a very, very stressful matter, very stressful subject, but I think... Uh, it was okay. <laughs> Victoria, to whom I was speaking, did a superb job. She understood clearly everything I said. I understood clearly everything she said. I felt her emotion. I felt her anger. So I don't think we could have uh, had a better telephone conversation. This is getting a little out of hand. Why didn't you call me? We have you. entertainment on three of the five evenings that we're here. Well, do you want just one argument, or were you thinking of taking a call? If you're going to speak a foreign language um, for eight, nine, ten hours um, without a break, you're going to be mentally exhausted. So just to sit there and be entertained is absolutely necessary. <laughs> If you laugh, you feel good. If you feel good, you're relaxed. You are able to achieve better results in anything you're doing. I book Monday. A 
same time that I was improving my English and my listening level, I have made a lot of very, very funny things, presentation, performance, and I think it's, it has been a, a great, a, a wonderful experience for me. I am satisfied. My conclusion is very positive because I have achieved a lot of things. Maybe the most important thing is to be more confident in myself. The week has been probably the richest experience I've ever had. Um, I came here expecting just to meet some Spanish people and talk with them, but I have learnt so much. You come here with a positive attitude and a gregarious mind and an open heart, you've got the best time of your life. I think really my, my, my English has, has improved. In my opinion, it's an excellent course. Maybe the, the best one I ever attended. Where's your friends from? I feel like we're taking away much more than we contributed because we learned so much and met so many wonderful people. It's like old friends together. And it's, almost, it's a real phenomenon to see how this occurs. At the end of the week, you see people crying and they're sad and they're upset. And that's not because you know, they're going to stop improving their English. It's because you know, they've, they've made a really close group of friends. Which one is correct? Do you know the right answer? Chop chop! The correct answer is... C. He flew to New York last week. Hello again. Welcome to the One Minute English class. I'm rolling down my sleeves and buttoning my sleeves uh, because I want to button my sleeves. But I could do the opposite. I could do the opposite. I can do whatever I want in front of a television camera. So I'm going to unbutton my sleeves and roll them up. O en la famos, roll them up. The Muppets, roll them up. So now, as you can see, as you can see, I have unbuttoned my left sleeve and I'm rolling it up. I'm rolling up my left sleeve. Okay, now I'm unbuttoning my right sleeve and I am proceeding to roll it up. I'm rolling up my right sleeve. So far I have rolled up my sleeves but not beyond my elbow. My sleeves are below my elbows, but I have rolled them up. Why? Because I have to teach English. And when I work, the first thing I do is to roll up my sleeves because it gives me the right attitude for working and for studying too. If you want to learn English, my first recommendation is to roll up your sleeves. Okay. See you soon. Está muy bien porque efectivamente eh, hay veces que es más difícil entender el acento de unos de unos anglos que vienen de unos países eh, con relación a otros y aquí tienes oportunidad un poco de de aprender no solamente el acento americano, el canadiense, sino pues bueno, pues otros acentos eh, de gente que habla inglés, sí, está muy bien. En Inglaterra o en Estados Unidos, para estudiar inglés, pues normalmente vas unas determinadas horas. Y quizás a lo mejor el resto del día, pues eh, no estás en contacto con gente que habla inglés. O si encuentras eh, españoles en esos países, pues te reúnes con ellos, de tal manera que no estás todo el tiempo oyendo y hablando en inglés. 
mientras que aquí pues estás desde por la mañana hasta por la noche. Hello again and welcome back to the One Minute English Class. Regular verbs. Siempre se habla de los irregulares, pero vamos con los verbos regulares. Regular verbs. Uh, the irregular verbs receive all of the uh, attention. But the poor regular verbs. Well, there are three kinds. Por la forma en que se termina la pronunciación. Los que terminan con sonido de de dura. Play, played. Stay, stayed. Y luego los que tienen sonido de te. Work, worked. Walk, walked. Talk, talked. Park, parked. Y luego los que añaden una sílaba más, tipo ID. For example, last, durar. Lasted. Insist. Insisted. All right. Wait. Waited. Okay, let's go back. Column one. Columna número uno. De dura, sin una sílaba más. Stay, stayed. Play, played. Los que tienen sonido de T, aunque sea E de. Walk, walked. Worked, worked. Park, parked. And then finally, the third column. Additional syllable. The sound is an ID or ED. Last, lasted. Insist, insisted. Wait, waited. You need to practice your regular verbs because the endings tell the listener what verb tense you're speaking in. It's essential. Like in Spanish, yo hablo, no habla, que okay, hablamos, habláis, hablan, hablasteis. You need to finish the words to give the listener the tense. Ayer habló, 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 no dice nada. Hablé, hablaste, habló, hablamos, hablaste, hablaron. You need to finish. And in English too. Worked, stayed, insisted. I insist that you practice this, please. The Born Challenge. Choose the right question. I came to the dinner with my girlfriend. Quickly. Hurry up! The correct answer is... Who did you come to the dinner with? Pronunciation. What have? What have? What have you done? What have you done? What have they stolen? What have they stolen? What have we forgotten? What have we forgotten? What have? What have? Pronunciation. Welcome back. Welcome back to our third segment of today's Vaughan in Vivo. It's me again, and we are going to continue learning English. And to help me is Blanca. Hello again. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. Now, is there an elephant in this room? No, there isn't an elephant in, an elephant. An elephant in this room. Okay. Uh, how many elephants could fit in this TV studio? Maybe 20 elephants. 20 elephants. Okay. How long do you think it would take us to put 20 elephants in this room? Oh, it depends on the behavior of it the It depends elephant. on. It's been, it depends on the behavior of the elephants. Y usa la misma frase, pero en condicional. Dependería. It would. It would depend on the behavior of the elephants. All right. Are there any elephants in China? Are there any elephants in I the don't States? think so. In the States, only in the zoo. In the zoo in <laughs> China as well. All right, but maybe in the south of China. I don't know, but... Uh, maybe. In the area of Burma, Birmania, that area of I China. I have saw them in the zoo. All right. Okay, now ask me if I know where Clark Gable was born. Do you know where Clark Gable. Gable was born? No, I don't. I think he was born in Los Angeles. 
I think so, in California, but I don't really know. Ask me if I know where Albert Einstein was born. Do you know where Albert Einstein was born? No. I think he was born in Switzerland, or Austria, or Germany. One of the three, but I know. Ask me if I know where he died. Do you know where he died? Do you know where he died? All right. ¿Sabes dónde muere o dónde murió? Dónde murió. Claro. I can't tell me las palabras. Yes, I know where he died. Ask me where. Where did he die? He died in the United States. I think in New Jersey, in the state of New Jersey. Uh, ask me if I know uh, where George Bush was born. Do you know where George Bush was born? Yes, I do. Where was he born? Okay, where was he born? Born. Born. <laughs> uh, George Bush was born in Connecticut, I believe. Uh, ask me if I know where he grew up. Do you know where he grew up? Yes, I do. Where did he grow up? He grew up in Texas, in West Texas. Uh, ask me if I have ever been to the town where he grew up. Have you ever been in the town where two, he... Two, preferred two. Mm. Have you ever been to the town where he grew up? Yes, I have. Ask me how many times I've been there. How many times have you been there? Just once. All right. And ask me what the name of the town is. What's the name of the town? The name of the town is Midland. Ask me what the population is. What's the population? About 100,000. Ask me what's special about the town. What's special about the town? It's usually very rich. Usually. Ask me why it's not rich all the time. Why isn't it all rich all the time? Why isn't it rich? Uh, why isn't it rich all the time? Uh, because when the oil prices are low, mm. it's not rich. Okay, well, it's not rich. It has financial, economic problems when the oil prices are low. Mm. All right? And to ask me why I went there. Why did you go there? I didn't go there. I was passing through. But I stopped there for the night. I was passing through. Okay? And to ask me where I was going. Where were you going? I was driving to Colorado from Texas. Ask me why I wanted to go to Colorado. Why did you want to go to Colorado? Cor Colorado. <laughs> Colorado. <laughs> Colorado, te cuesta la L. Uh, because my sister lives there. Hmm. Ask me if she still lives there. Does she still live there? Yes, she does. Okay, ask me uh, if, I, if I have a favorite president. Do you have a favorite president? Of the United States, yes, I do. Ask me who my favorite president is. Who is your favorite president? My favorite president is George Washington, the mm. first president. Okay. Uh, ask me when he became the president. When did he become a president? The president. Uh, when did he become the president? Uh, in 1787. Okay, two years before the French Revolution. Mm. Ask me how long he was the president. How long was he the president? He was a president for eight years. Mm. Okay. Ask me if he was an intelligent man. Was he an intelligent man? Uh, yes, he was. Uh, ask me if he was more intelligent than the other politicians at that time. Was he more intelligent than other politicians at that politicians. time? Politicians at that time. It depends on your definition of intelligent. Uh, he was surrounded, he was contemporary, more or less, with people like Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, Alexander Hamilton, uh, very important, very, very intelligent people. But I think George Washington was more intelligent, what you call emotional intelligence. All right? And he commanded more respect uh, than the others. And um, <clears throat> ask me how many presidents there have been in the history of the United States. How many president has presidents has been? Presidents. Ponme las S's okay. en los plurales, Blanca. I don't get angry, please. Yeah, pero es que es, es toda okay. la vida. Esta es una pelea de por vida. Mm. Y yo creía que tú como <laughs> China no caerías en el mismo. Because this is the only thing in English. I think none other languages. Put an S, <laughs> un libro, dos libros. Well, but not in the verbs. Un lápiz, dos lápices. <laughs> okay. Y si yo dijera dos lápiz, ¿Cuántas veces te he pedido dos lápices? Dos lápices. Claro, hay que pluralizar <laughs> las los plurales. Okay. okay. Now, ask me how many presidents there have been in the United in the history of the United States. How many presidents 
have, have there been in the history of United States? Of the United States. Of the United States. You ask me questions I don't know. Pro I think there have been 47. 47. 40. 47. Okay. Yeah. Yes, 47. <clears throat> and um, ask me how many elephants there have been in this room. How many elephants have there been in this room? I don't think there has ever been an elephant in this room. Okay. Ask me how many pre American presidents have been assassinated. How many presidents? American presidents. Uh, how many American presidents? How many? Don't you want me to make an, uh, a mistake? So Not you that can mistake. correct me. Not that mistake. Okay. Ese error no, por favor. Okay. Las eses al final de las plurales, no me hagas esos errores. No okay. me cometas errores. Así. Uh, ask me how many presidents have been assassinated <laughs> in the history of the United States. How many presidents have there... Have been. Have been assassinated. <laughs> assassinated. <laughs> how many presidents, how many American presidents have been assassinated? In the United history. in the history of the United States, of the United uh, I don't States. know. Assassinated? Uh, Maybe one? No, no, more, 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 more. Lincoln. Lincoln. Garfield. Uh, Kennedy. Mc no, just a second. Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. John Garfield. Mm. William McKinley. Mm. All right. John Kennedy. Four. Mm. Okay. Now ask me how many presidents have died in office. How many American presidents? Die, have died. Have died in the office. In office. In, in office. office. Durante el mandato, si te, in office. Uh, in office. Well, these four, plus Zachary Taylor, William Henry Harrison, I can't remember, uh, Warren Harding, Franklin Roosevelt, that's eight. I think that's it. Yeah, eight. Eight presidents have died in office either by violence or by natural, more or less natural causes. You say in office. In office means durante okay. el mandato. Okay. To be in office. Right now, George W. Bush is in office. Hmm. In the 1990s, basically, Bill Clinton was in office. And when Bill Clinton was in office, I lived in Spain. Okay. Ask me if I had a TV show when Bill Clinton was in office. Did you have a TV show? When Bill Clinton was in office? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Ask you where Bill Clinton was born. Where was Bill Clinton born? Clinton. 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 London. London. Lisbon. Lisbon. All right. Lincoln. Lincoln. Yeah, Clinton. Clinton. All right. <laughs> uh, Abraham Lincoln. That is a key. Is Lincoln. Lincoln. Can, can, can. Can, can. can. Clinton. Uh, Clinton was born in Arkansas. Ask me where his wife Hillary was born. Where was his wife Hillary born? Okay, she was born in Chicago. Okay. Ask me if they met when they were adolescents. Did they meet when they were adolescents? When they were. Uh, did they meet when, were, when they were adolescent? Adolescents. Adolescents. <laughs> yes, the, no, they didn't. No, they didn't. Ask me where they met. Where did they meet? They met in law school when they were studying law together. Mm. All right. Ask me how many children they have. How many children do they have? They have one ch ch child, child, one daughter. Mm. Okay. Ask me if I think Hillary Clinton will win the next election. Do you think Hillary Clinton will win the next election? election? Clinton? Uh, no, I don't. Ask me why. Why don't you think Hillary Clinton will... No, repeat a su nombre entero. Why don't you think she'll win? Why, do you, why don't you think she will win? Uh, she antagonizes too many people. She mm. has a lot of supporters. Mm. But with Hillary, it's black or white. Mm. People like her or they don't like her at all. And I, I'm afraid, I, I, I imagine she will have difficulties winning mm. the election. Ask if I think she is qualified to be the president. Do you think she's qualified to be the president? Yes. Uh, she's not my candidate, no. But she is qualified to be a good, probably to be a good president of the United States. Ask if I'm qualified to be the president. Are you qualified to be the president of the states? Of the No, se dice of the states cuando dices the president. Okay. Se dice todo. Of the United States? No, I'm not. 
Ask me why. Why aren't you qualified to be the president? Uh, because I don't have the desire to be the president. It's too much responsibility and uh, not enough personal time, mm -hmm. not enough privacy. You understand? Yes, I do. I prefer more privacy. I think most capable people agree. So the uh, job of president of Spain and France, Germany, the United States, mm -hmm. uh, most the most qualified people usually don't want uh, to be in the public eye so much because they have a private life and often something, you know, that they want to remain private. Okay, mm -hmm. our lives more more freedom. The freedom you have to have a, in your private life. All right, <clears throat> now ask me if I know. Ask me if I know how many children the president of Spain has. Do you know how many children the, the president of Spain has? I'm not sure if they have one or two daughters. Do they have one daughter or two daughters? One daughter and two sons. Are you sure? I think so. I don't think so. I don't know. I don't think so. All right, ask me if I know. Ah, no. I was thinking about the last uh, president. Okay, Mr. Aznar. Yes. And Mr. Zapatero, I'm not, I think he has one daughter. Mm, yes, yes. I think he has one daughter, mm. but maybe he has two. I really don't know. And um, <clears throat> ask me if I know where Adolfo Suarez was born. Do you know where Adolfo Suarez was born? Yes, I do. Where was he born? He was born in Avila, mm. in Cebreros. Ask me if I know what he's doing now. Do you know what he's doing now? Yes, I do. What is he doing now? He's retired. All right, he's fighting with Alzheimer's now. Mm. All right, and uh, ask me if I know how many members there are in the Spanish Parliament. Do you know how many members are there? There are in the Spanish Parliament. Good. Repeat. Do you know how many members there are in the Spanish Parliament? Vale, es con pregunta, ¿no? Do you know how many members there are? Yeah, no, I don't. I really don't. There are about 400, 350. There are a lot of members in the Spanish Parliament. Ask me if I know how many provinces there are in Spain. Do you know how many provinces there are in Spain? Yes, I do. How many provinces are there in Spain? <laughs> there are 50 provinces in Spain. Okay. Yes. Uh, ask me if I know what the capital of La Rioja is. Do you know what's the capital of La Rioja? <laughs> y el verbo? Do you know? What? What? The capital. the capital of Rioja is. Yeah. Do you know what the capital of La Rioja is? Repeat. Do you know what, what the capital of La Rioja is? Yes, I do. What's the capital of La Rioja? Logroño. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever been there? Uh, no, I haven't. Ah, ask me if I've ever been there. Have you ever been there? Yes, I have. Ask me how many times. How many times have you been there? But three or four times. Ask me if I like the city. Do you like the city? The city, yes. Do you like the city? Yes. Do the you, city. Do you like the city? Yes, I do. Ask me why. Why do you like the city? It's pretty and it has a night. It has a very healthy nightlife. Very fun, mm. and it has money. Yeah, there, there are a lot of people with money in Logroño. Ask me if I would like to settle in Logroño. Would you like to settle in Lo settle? Would you like to settle in Logroño? I wouldn't mind living there. I wouldn't mind living there. All right. I prefer Madrid. You prefer Madrid. I Madrid prefer big, big city. You like big cities? Yes, to yeah. live and to work. Okay. Do you like the traffic in Madrid? No, I don't. Do you like the pollution in Madrid? No, I don't. Do you like the noise in Madrid? No, I don't. Do you like the stress and tension in Madrid? Not too much. Then why do you like to live in this city? But I like stimulating city to work. <laughs> and ask me if I think Logroño would be a stimulating city for you. Mm, do you think Logroño would be a stimulating city for me? Yes, I do. I think you would enjoy living in Logroño. Uh, does your business require living in Madrid? Or could you perform your functions from Logroño? I don't think so. It mm -hmm. requires to be a capital. It requires being in the capital. It requires being in the capital. Ca capital. 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 All right. Ask me if I know what time you got up this morning. Do you know what time I got up this morning? Yes, I do. What time did I get up this morning? You got up at a quarter to seven. <laughs> Is that correct? No. <laughs> what time did you get up? This morning I got up 30 past, no, 
7.30. At 7.30. Uh, do you usually get up before or after 7.30? I usually go up at 7 o'clock. I usually get up at 7 o'clock. So ask, why did you sleep an extra half hour today? Uh, I didn't. I wasn't sleeping. I was a week. Eras una semana. No, no, no. I, I was a week. I, or I was awake. I was awake. What's the first letter in the alphabet? A. A. Awake. Awake. So you woke up at 7, but you didn't get up until 7.30. Yes. So you decided to be lazy. Yes. All right. Do you have more work these days or less work? Le uh, less work these right. days. Are you bored? No, I'm not. All right. And um, after this class, are you going home or going back to work? I'm going back home. You're going back home. Okay. Are you a little bit tired now? No, I'm not. All right. What time during the day do you start to get tired? Uh, maybe at 10 o'clock. Ask me what time I start getting tired. What time do you get, do what you time do you start getting, getting tired? Uh, when I'm working, I start getting tired around 8.30, 8 o'clock mm -hmm. or 8.30. And ask me what time I start to feel sleepy. What time do you start to feel sleepy? I start to feel sleepy around 10.30 at night. Ask you what I do when I feel sleepy. What do you do when you feel sleepy? When you feel sleepy. Ah, uh, what do you do when you feel sleepy? I go to sleep. I go to bed. I go to bed. Ask me if it usually takes me a long time to fall asleep. Does it usually take you to a fall long, asleep? A long, a long time to fall asleep? Usually not. Ask you what I do when I can't sleep. What do you do when you can't sleep? Sometimes I eat something, and other times I simply sit on a, a couch in my house. And uh, ask me if I usually fall asleep after I eat something. Do you usually fall asleep after you eat something? Something? No, not always, 50-50. Ask me if I take sleeping pills. Do you take sleeping pills? No, I don't. Ask me how many sleeping pills I've taken in my life. How many sleeping pills have you taken in your life? None in my life. Ask if I don't think I should try a sleeping pill. Don't you think you should try a sleeping pill? No, why not? Do you think I should try a sleeping pill? I don't think so. I'm not a, um, a doctor. You're not a doctor. All right, when was the last time you took a sleeping pill? I've never taken a sleeping pill. When was the last time you took an aspirin? Mm, many, many years ago. When was the last time you took pay, a pain reliever? A pain reliever? I... An analgesico. No, I, I can't remember, maybe... When was the last time you had a headache? Um, I have never had a headache. When was the last time you had a backache? Oh. I've never had a backache. When was the last time you had a toothache? Uh, oh. Um, maybe 10 years ago. All right. Uh, when was the last time you had a sore throat? Ah. Mm. Many years ago. All right. Ask me when the last time was I had a sore throat. When was the last time you had a sore throat? Last week. Mm. Ask me when the last time was I had a headache. When was the last time you had a headache? Yesterday. Mm. Ask me when the last time was I had a backache. When was the last time you had a headache? A headache? A, a, a backache. A backache. A backache. Right now. Right now. Okay. <laughs> Ask me when the last time was I had a stomachache. Oh. When was the last time you had a stomachache? Twenty-five years ago. Ask me when the last time was I had a toothache. When was the last time you had a toothache? Twenty-five, thirty years ago. All right. And ask me when the last time was I had problems with my joints. Las articulaciones. When was the last time you had the problems? You with had problems. No pun. Ah, con problem. Okay. Well, you had problems with your joint. Eso, con las articulaciones <laughs> o con la articulación? With your joints. ¿Cuánto? Tengo más de uno, ¿no? Of course, you, <laughs> okay. you do. Uh, the last, I've never had problems with my joints. Mm -hmm. What am I doing now? You are bending your joint, your arm. I'm bending my arm, okay. What joint is this? If, uh, is, um, What's this? I can't remember. Okay, ask me how to say codo in English. How do you say codo in English? Elbow. Oh, uh, yes, elbow. Elbow. And what's this joint? Mm. You don't remember? Wrist. Wrist, I don't okay, know. Okay, wrist. 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 How do you spell it? 
W R I S T. Good. And these joints? What I, are they? I, I, Ask me I how to know. say nudillos in English. How do you say nudillos in English? Knuckles. Knuckles. Con K delante, con nucleus, K muda. Knuckles. Knuckles. Yes. Okay. And the, the joint for your legs? I don't know. Ask me how many ask me how many knees I have. How many knees do you have? I have two knees. Okay. But if in English eso mola mucho, that's the bee's knees. That's, that's eso es las rodillas de las abejas, ah. de la abeja. That's the bee's knees. That's the bee's knees. Um, All right. How many knees do people have in China? How many knees <laughs> do American people have in the States? We have two. Okay. We do. <laughs> All right, good. Ask me how much time we have left. How many time do we how have? How much? Uh, how much time do we have left? We have three minutes left. Okay. Okay. Now, what joint do I have in the between my waist and my legs? What joint is that? What joint do you have between your waist and waist? Between your waist and your legs. My hips. Your hips. Ask me, ask me how many hips I have. How many hips do you have? I have two hips. How many wrists do I have? How many wrists do you have? How many wrists do you have? I have two wrists. And you, how many elbows do you have, Blanca? The same number as you do. The same number as I do. Now, do you use your elbow to bend your arm or to bend your leg? <laughs> what do you think? Well, I want you to answer me. What do you use your elbow for? To bend your arm or to bend your leg? To bend my arms. Okay. Now, can you bend both arms at the same time? Of course, or I can. Ask me if I know how to bend both arms at the same time. Do you know how to bend your both arms? Senior, do you know how to bend both arms? Do you know how to bend both arms at, at the, the same time? Yes, you see, I can bend both arms at the same time. Ask you if I can bend my arm backwards. Can you? Can you bend your arm backwards? No, I can't. Can you? Neither do I. Neither can I. Uh, neither can I. Ask me if I can bend my wrist backwards. Uh, can you raise? You, can you bend? Can you bend your wrist? Wrist. Your wrist, back. Backwards. Backwards. No, I can't. Well, a little bit. Mm -hmm. Ask if I can bend my fingers backward. Can you bend your finger? Fingers. Your fingers backward. Not really. Just a little it's bit. Is backward or backwards? Con o sin ese, los dos valen. Okay. Okay. Backwards. <clears throat> backward. Okay. I can't bend my finger backward. Okay. These a little bit better. Okay, ask you if I can bend my back. Backwards. Can you bend your back backwards? A little bit. Okay. I can't. You can't. Okay, ask you if I can bend my legs in the opposite direction. Can you bend your legs in the opposite direction? <laughs> direction? No, I can't. No, I can't. Ask me how much time we have left now. How much? How much time do we have left now? It's time. Detail. To stop. Technical. It's time for us to stop. Okay. Okay. I'm a little bit tired. I have to continue for another half hour alone. I'm sorry for you. Ask me if I feel sorry for myself. Do you feel sorry for yourself? No. Ask me why. Why don't you feel sorry for yourself? Because when I get in front of the camera and the light on the camera turns red and I can see that I'm on the air, oh, I am transported to a different dimension and I begin to teach English, especially when I'm alone. So, I'll be back in just about five minutes. <sighs> and in the meantime, go make a sandwich or go get some milk and cereal, but come back in about five minutes because I have a lot of important things to teach you in the next 25 or 30 minutes, okay? And Blanca, thank you for coming. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure for me Como too. Como de costumbre, como siempre, as always. As always. Okay, all right, see you, see you in a minute. Hello again, welcome back. The present conditional, the second conditional, como dicen muchos, the second conditional. Uh, estoy aquí porque me pagan. Claro, si no me pagaran, no estaría aquí, está claro. They, I'm here. Estoy hablando del presente ahora, no en el condicional. I'm here because they pay me. Ahora, pasemos al condicional, sacando una conclusión lógica. If they didn't pay me, I wouldn't be here. If they didn't give me cold cash money, I wouldn't teach this program. I'm a mercenary in El Fondo. Okay. The door is closed because it's not open. <laughs> Logically. 
If the door were open, it wouldn't be closed. I'm looking at you because I'm not looking at the ceiling. If I were looking at the ceiling, I wouldn't be looking, continue, continue, I wouldn't be looking at you. I have 10 fingers because I don't have 11. If I had 11 fingers, I wouldn't have 10. All right. It's very easy to practice the second conditional. Simply make statements with because. I live in Spain because this is my country. If Spain weren't my country, I wouldn't live in Spain. It's very easy to make the conditional and to practice it, simply making sentences in the present tense with because. All right. I'll come back another day and talk about the past or third conditional. Hello and welcome back. Welcome back to another half hour segment. And now this is our third half hour segment, which means that probably I have one person, one victim, una victima aquí, all right, for me. And that person, I think you, you've met her, I think. If you've been watching these programs regularly, if you have been watching these programs on a regular basis, es una de formas de hacer, de ver estos programas de forma regular, okay, con cierta regularidad. If you have been watching these programs regu, regu, gu, gu, regularly, or if you've been watching these programs on a regular basis, then probably you know Monica. How are you? Fine, thank you. Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, tengo un reto simple con Monica. Es encontrar una forma de que se tropeque, bueno, echarle la zancadilla lingüísticamente. It's impossible. She gets everything right. In a, my last <coughs> class with Monica, I, she made one mistake in 25 minutes. All right, so she's going to make more mistakes today. Eh? Yeah, I'm going to make her work today. Okay, are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay, listen, ask me if donkeys and mules should be used for everyday transportation. Should donkeys and mules be used for be used for everyday transportation? Uh, not really. I don't think so. Yeah. Have you ever ridden a donkey? No, I haven't. Have you ever ridden a mule? No, I haven't. Have you ever ridden a horse? Yes, I have. Really? Yes. All right. Do you know how to ride horses? Mm, a little bit. A little bit. Okay. Are they dangerous? Yes, they are. All right. Ask me if I've ever ridden a donkey. Have you ever ridden a donkey? Yes, I have. All right. A little burro. Yeah, a little donkey. Okay. <coughs> In Mexico. Now, uh, have we, in your opinion, have we created a better world in our generation? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, well, speak about your generation. We're, we're from okay. different generations. Ask me if my generation has created a better world. Have your, has. has your generation created a better world? I think so. Now, my question, has your generation created a better world? I don't think so. <laughs> I think so. Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, you have. Uh, you go back 50 years, go back 50 years, this includes both our generations, of the five, at that time, maybe five billion people, mil millones, cinco mil millones, the five billion people on the planet Earth, at least two billion were below the poverty line and lived on subsistence with poor water systems, poor health facilities, uh, now, that's 2 billion people. That's 40% um, of the world population. That was 50 years ago. Now, today, out of the 6 billion, out of, so you think, out of the 6 billion people who live on this planet, only about 1.5 million are still below the po poverty line who live hand to mouth. Mm -hmm. So we say they live hand to mouth, which means it's been a very big improvement. Okay. People live materially better. In general, there are millions and millions and millions of exceptions, but in general, people live better today mm -hmm. than 50 years ago. And it's thanks to <coughs> your generation and my generation. So let me repeat the question. <laughs> have we created a better world in our generation? Yes, we have. Of course, come on. You're creating a better world all the time with your work. <laughs> yeah, you're creating different ways, or you're promoting and enhancing ways of enhances realzar or mejorar mm -hmm. is ways of attending people's health concerns 
have you said preocupaciones concerns health concerns and so you're working, you're a telecommunications engineer, but you work in things that are directly related to improving or maintaining people's health. Mm -hmm. And 50 years ago, what you do was not done. Nope. Life was much more precarious 50 years ago for many more people than it is today. Life is still precarious, and it will always be precarious for the rest of the history of humanity. But we are certainly finding ways to reduce the uh, degree of precariousness mm -hmm. in life, okay? Do you consider life precarious? No, I don't. No, but it is. Come on, it is. I mean, you can leave this studio today and have an accident and be killed in a car crash or anything. So you never know. Even the ceiling here could fall. You know, and everybody on TV would see, Profesor de Inglés perece en, <laughs> <laughs> en estudio de grabación, okay, junto con su alumna. Okay, so life is precarious, but we, it's much less precarious than before. And material well-being. Material well-being? Bueno, material, okay. sí. Espiritual también. Well-being. Spiritual well-being perhaps is another consideration which I really don't know. But material well-being is much greater okay. than 100 years ago and even 50 years ago which it's an interesting debate, it's an interesting consideration, whether, whether material well-being has a positive impact or a less positive impact on spiritual mm -hmm. well-being. That's an interesting question. We'll talk about that another day, okay? Question. Uh, well, no, you asked me. Ask me if I was sleepy when I went to bed last night. Were you sleepy when you went to bed last night? No, I wasn't. I wasn't sleepy when I went to bed last night. Ask me why. Why weren't you sleepy when you went to bed last night? Because I took a nap. Okay. Yeah. Ask me if I take a nap every day. Did you take a nap every day? No, I don't. Ask me why I took a nap yesterday. Nap yesterday. Good. Repeat. Why did you take a nap? Perdona? Why did you take why? a nap? Why? No dices bien why. Okay. Entiendo what. Oh, why. 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 Tell me, do you know the song by the Tell me 